Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another session of Cauldron of Dice. It is nice to meet you. <laughs> Before we roll into tonight's episode, as always, we have a quick little announcement from our lovely sponsor who deals with our weekly shenanigans. We love you dearly, and it is Dice Envy. For the dice goblin in you. Yes, d- for all your tabletop Sounds kind of sexy. Needs, dice Envy has everything you need. Use our promo code CAULDRON in all caps with your first purchase, and you will get 10% off. Hell yeah. Their new dice currently is the Cash Money <laughs> Trap Degas, Dega, Trap Dega, and Matizi. Painters. Yeah, just all awesome awesome cash. They're all money. named after painters. It is very cool. I was about to and say, I was like, that's that's very witty. Yes. Uh, they also had the Alpha Dice set, which looks amazing. So come on. So to be like Rob Rowdy, come on down. Come on down. But wait, there's more. No, there's no more. <laughs> so thank you again to Dice Envy. We love you very much, and thank you for putting up with our shenanigans. Also, I realized I fucked up last week that did. I did fuck up. So reach at me at chris.seaofweird at gmail.com. I did miss the <laughs> Gmail. I'm sorry if you had to go to Hotmail, uh, uh, AOL. Um, Computer. Yeah, you know, Roadrunner, you know, .rr. No, no. chris.seaofweird at gmail.com. Send us some likes. I know, I know when you fuck it up, people won't let you forget, but... That's how it goes. Mm-hmm. We won't. Don't you worry. All right. Damn shame. Uh, and Hannah will not be joining us tonight. She is sick. We hope she feels better. Yeah. So Peter will be it's playing. Not the, it's not the Rona. It's not the Rona. Yeah, it's not the Rona. Uh, Peter will be playing for Cat Benatar, but Cat Benatar may only be involved in battle. So it's totally so fine. I'll and then. Warrior. I will hit him with my best shot. Yes, uh, Adrian is here. She's at work right now, so she can hear us, but she probably won't be talking much right now because she is busy at work. You know, responsibilities. Yeah, that's how it goes. Responsibilities, yeah. but she will be joining Being us adult. Uh, later later in the session. So with that, let us roll into tonight's episode. Where we last left off, Rayless Helps had tried to get information of how Jorlin knew Old Jor. Both of them were um, giving half-truths to the party, but not really giving the full answers. Um, Old Jor kind of butted into certain conversations that he could and tried to get a lay of this party while Cat Benatar had retrieved something from the first tower that Jorlin needed. Uh, the air, the airship had then made its way back to Sh- Sharn, where it docked again in Upper Dura. Upper Dura. There you go. And, and then proceeded to make it the way to the Dragon Mark Towers to meet with Kavir's brother Corvin, who had mis- mysteriously disappeared on a lightning rail, not even a few hours ago. But to him, 30 years had passed, and he had been in the realm of Thelonis, the fairy court. Though he knows he's been go- he had been there for 30 years and somehow been returned to the material plane only a few hours to you guys he has no memory of anything that had transpired in that 30 year time Vishara had tried to use lesser restoration which did not work but had deduced that someone or something had modified his memory because the only memory he has is making a deal with with the Prince of Frost. This deal was to find the Manifest Zones spread about Corvair and of Eberron and try to re-energize the Manifest Zones and find 
a way to reopen the gates between the material plane and to Thelonis. However, as they had all discovered this, Safeguard and Mal were not there. Fearing for their f friend and their bounty, so to speak, mm -hmm. that they were to find for Merrick's, booty. a knock at the door was then heard. To which Druma answered, and Vishar tried to hide and failed miserably and fell on the floor and decided to stay on the floor. And just taunt from the floor. <laughs> taunt from the floor. Uh, standing before Drinma was Alistair Willow, an old comrade? Fellow Thranian? Oh, I'll never tell. I'll never tell. With two guards. Trem and Rugnar. Bless you. Thank you. Alistair skipped right to the point of saying he needed the plan. These blueprints. Blueprints that Rayless helped had found right when they started venturing together. When they were looking for Ulrich. These blueprints still, they don't know what these blueprints were, but Alistair wanted them. Drinma, trying to say they were on the same side, quickly got annoyed and <laughs> kicked Alistair, initiating battle. Fuck yes. Did some Barbarians. Him, But Alistair, being a paladin of the Silver silver Flame, took that kick and divine smited Drinma with vengeance. <laughs> That fight was Natural that broken. fight was so fucking rough. <laughs> um, during the fight, knowing that he could not win and he was outnumbered, Alistair began to retreat and make his way towards one of the bridges leading to a different district out of the Dragonmark Towers. Instead of taking the bridge, he proceeded to jump off and activate a Featherfall coin he had and land on the Sky Coach that was waiting for him. A Sky Coach that was going that belonged to the airship, the Celestio Noir. Also on this sky coach was Mal, Merrick's Dekaneth, and Safeguard. Merrick's and Mal were bound and gagged, and Sa Safeguard was in stasis due to having his Dosset removed. And Alistair's parting words to Dream and the rest of the party was, do not worry, I'll take care of them. Which is bullshit, because I am worried. Um, at this point, Oldor and Col Corvin had decided to team up since they both had similar goals. <clears throat> but Cor uh, uh, Kavir, knowing that he couldn't go with him, begged Corvin not to go, to not take on this travel, to forget the three other hundred souls that are currently still trapped in Thelonis. But Corvin, still missing memory, knew he had to try to uphold his end of this deal. To which point the brothers, who had just been reunited, had to separate again. It's like in the dick. It's like they they just barely saw each other. It's like they just saw each other. What the hell? We just saw each other. We're supposed to retire. We didn't even dock. Damn. <laughs> um, Rayless helps then made their way back to Drinma's airship, getting ready to potentially give chase to Alistair to rescue their friend, get some leads of where he might be taking them, at which point Jorlin had f decided to divulge a little bit into the Draconic Prophecy and also tell them and show them just how they should trust him. And as he did that, after the airship had left Sharn and began to fly away, he transformed into an ancient silver dragon and flew alongside the ship. And with that, Rayless helps. Oh, you skipped As over that see, badass I was gonna say, there was also some pretty fucked up interrogating. Yeah, I wasn't gonna go into that <laughs> one. Also, You mind some... melted him. You made him a six-year-old. Ten-year-old. He was 10. He was fairly competent. You lived He's a good life. I'm 10. <laughs> although, big. although, like the reverse of that. although, 
we now bring some excellent questions to the table. One, um, is circumcision part of the half elf uh, religion, or is that just a standard practice? Um, is there docking? Because again, they're in they're in sky ships where they dock, so I assume there's some sort of docking. God damn it, Mr. DM. Or no, would that be a uh, Mr. DM? Can you clarify? No. I cannot. Which one? Uh, t uh, either. I mean, it's a legitimate question. It, yeah, yeah. Is 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 Kavir or Corbin circumcised? I need to know this. That's not that a, a that, Or is only one of them, and we have to find out. Mm. <laughs> that. Something that Drema might have to try to be able to. <laughs> 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 You're just like I had an interesting theory. <laughs> Seduce me. Looks like the scientist in me is gonna have to yeah, peruse scientist. around and find out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, that's what it is. Alright. The things that keep me up at night. Yeah. So with as you literally gaze as a ancient silver dragon is flying next to you it kind of Jorlin shoots up to into the sky about 200 feet above the ship and then begins to dive bomb down slows down and then repolymorphs into his old frail human male self why do you look like a really weird fish Kavir is just standing there on the deck of the ship, wide-eyed and kind of speechless. And Vishar is just literally just standing there staring. Drinma, did you have- Vanitar is nowhere to be found. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Drinma, did you just ask why I look like a fish? I mean, it was slender. And it was like swimming in the sky, so I assumed it was like a sky fish. Apparently Al is freaking out, forgetting how to speak common for a moment, and just being a blithering, stuttering idiot, only being able to say random words in Draconic. <laughs> I don't know what she's- I don't know what Al is saying at all. Apparently Al is fanboying. <laughs> Fanboying. Or fanboying. He can fanboy fan or whatever. Oh, my senpai. <laughs> <laughs> senpai. <laughs> foaming, fo think foaming mouth guy from Avatar, everyone. Oh, <laughs> This my fucking God. weeb over here. You said senpai, so I'm going weeb. I'm just, I'm just like... <laughs> yes. Jesus. What I can tell you is I work for a certain cabal. Fellow draconians like myself. Our rule is to observe and not blatantly show ourselves to mortal eyes. What's a cabal? This, this just being an, an exception. No, the I am exiled from Argon Nesson. No. Oh. Exiled. Kicked out, exiled. Exiled. Whichever term you would like to prefer. I had recorded something in the Rings of Siberius and in an, some other observations I made that I thought needed to be taken care of. <laughs> Personally, and not just standing idle, idle by while my enemies know the same thing. I presented it to a few of my colleagues and friend, I thought friends, and told them my idea, and I was then kicked out. So I took the vast amount of wealth I had and made my way here. 
the entire time that uh, Jorlin was talking, Drinma is trying to make a similar motion to like try to also replicate like the polymorph move to become a skyfish. <clears throat> I'm I'm sorry you were what? I was apparently not listening to me. Really? Jorlin, Jor Jor there's so many questions that come in mind. I would say the first one has to be, are you a human that turns into a dragon, or are you a dragon that turns into a human? I'm a dragon that turns into a human. That's amazing. How do you fit all that into that tiny little body? How... How old are you? Oh, boy. Count after five in Fortnites, if you don't mind, can you convert that into <laughs> Fortnites for me, please? I am currently one thousand seven hundred and twenty-two years old. <laughs> Is that a lot? I don't. That seems. That seems. That's that seems young. Uh, that seems know. low, though. Would I know? Um, uh, would Kabir know uh, if that is? Average lifespan for a dragon? Um. Uh, with your background, I would say make a history check. Not like a nature check, maybe? Nature check, sorry. Not, yeah, nature check. Make a nature check. Makes sense. Dragons are found in the nature. Ergo, nature check. All right. So. That is a 17, good nice. sir. 17. Also, shout out to that new uh, uh, mythic dice set there on D&D &D Beyond. That looks Anna so bought cool. it, too. Yeah, Anna bought it, too. The Actually, I didn't have to buy it. It just showed up there. Um, yeah, you and I uh, had... Well, you guys have the DM. Oh, the annual subscription. Here. Yeah, I, actually, so 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 I have just the annual subscription. Um, so, so I actually dropped there from the DM one to just the normal one, um, and yeah, I uh, it just showed up. Oh, hmm. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> yeah. I just noticed. I just noticed now that I can roll the dice right here because it's in beta. So yeah, it's not, um, no exclusions no more. Free, free. With the stories of the dragons in your history, ancient is a very loose term. Ancient would be around the 801 to 1,000 years. He's kind of, he's, would be considered a great worm. Wow. Yeah, 1,722. A great worm is anything over 1,201 years. Jesus Christ. So he's really old. I assume that with uh, uh, that with him um, showing off, you know, like the size of, uh, of of his body and everything, that he's probably what like like size of, like half the ship uh, for for like an ancient dragon. Yeah, he was for the for his great worm age. He was almost as big as the ship. God, oh, God. shit! He's great worms are really big. Hell yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Well, we now know why he's been really odd to us. And why he gave Al such an odd look when we took him in. Mm hmm. Yes. But Al, to not know, is a little weird to me. That's why I asked where you found him, and where he came from. Honestly, I kind of found him just on like the, on, well, on that public transportation. <laughs> and and he some of us kind of drag along with us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some would even say that it was destiny. Anyways. We would. Uh. Well, I would. Are, are, are you like a god in Al's eyes? No, are you rever? Are very you happy, Grandpappy? Oh, 
I was thinking it was like a grand wizard or something, you know, being, well, being as old as you are, you're, I don't know why you think you need us. I'm sure you're plenty strong to take down whatever it is you're trying to conquer. Dragons conquer, don't they? Yeah, mm. that sounds about right. Um, well, with you being from Thrain and a old follower of the Silver Flame, you knew the dragons fought alongside the Kotal mm -hmm. to bind the Overlord. Right. So they were not conquerors. They were trying to end the conquering. Hmm. Stop the conquering from conquering. It's like fighting fire with fire. And to your point, Drenma. Yes. Uh, do I think I'm that powerful to stop what's coming? I do, but I'm not the one who is supposed to stop it. You all. It's awfully righteous of you. Thinking that Everyday people like us have uh, some sort of sway in this, maybe, destiny. The world always needs heroes. Light has... Well, the force of good, forces of good have always been weak. The balance has always been tipped in the scale of the Lords of Dust, the Bleak Council, the Overlords. But if you want me to be honest, you want to start trusting me, I understand that, and I have to be blatantly honest. You're pawns in a never-ending game. Sounds about right. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I myself am a pawn. A thousand, a thousand-year-old pawn. You don't think you were upgraded to like a rook or a, or a, or a bishop? I don't believe in faith. I've seen what faith has done to you mortals and humanoids. So we'll go rook. I love that you took my metaphor and you rolled with it. That was very nice. Good, nice. If that helps you, I mean, I'm glad you're actually listening. I'm a terrible chess player. No, terrible chess player. I'm just glad you're listening to me and not trying to polymorph. Uh, it looked really easy when you were doing it, and, and frankly, I thought, you know, I've never really tried it before, so can't hurt to try. Oh. I'd maybe have more fins. Well, as we... It wasn't even magic, Drenma. <laughs> and as you, as you all are talking, Drenma... Yes. Your crew is terrified. <laughs> they, they probably should be. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> All of a sudden, a giant ancient oh, yeah. super dragon dive bombing the ship. It's like watching like a kraken pop up out of nowhere next to your yeah. ship, and then everyone's just and, like, uh, "That's cool." My Drenma might want to tell the crew to to not try to be able to ready the guns. <laughs> Cop. <laughs> You kind of hear Alrin kind of try to squeak out that. Are we all right? Alrin, we're fine. Uh, this isn't the first craziest thing we've ever seen. No, we've seen some crazy shit, Cap. I think this takes the cake. This is def... <laughs> this is definitely uh, pretty high up on that list, yes. But trust me, I think we're okay. kind of looks to the rest of the crew, who are just wide-eyed, still, like, frozen in shock, disbelief, and some in fear. Wet their pants. Wet, or potentially had a bowel movement. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call it the poop deck. Uh, uh, hey. Where are we going, Cap? <sighs> well, I think that's up maybe to Jorlin to decide. He seems to know more about what's going on than us. I mean, we're just 
Like he says, just pawns in a... Just pawns right now. What's that? Where's Mal? Oh, uh, you, you know, Mal, she... Like, goes... Okay. She got kidnapped by Alistair. Yeah, him. yeah, he's... They've got as well. And Merrick's, too. We can't forget Merrick's as well. I mean, we don't really care, but... Yeah, also Merrick's. Where do you think Alistair would go? Uh, well... If I were a betting woman, woman, which I always am... Probably back to... Silverkeep. You just hear, uh... As you say that, you hear Alistair. You almost bet our payment. I mean, and Alrin, yeah. Alrin, Alrin, and then Drenma just like wide-eyed, like looks at Alrin, and just like. I did for the crew. I said. <laughs> he, he's such a he's such a jokester. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> well, if you're a betting woman, Drenma, where do you think your old comrade, old friend, would go? Yeah, definitely back to Silverkeep. There's enough fortification that they wouldn't have to worry about, uh... You mean Flamekeep? Flamekeep, yeah, sorry. Words are hard today. Yeah. It's bad when you say it like three times. Yeah, Flamekeep. Yeah. Didn't Alistair tell you to quit running away? I mean, he's right. I have been running away. For years now. His way of getting you to come back. I don't doubt that it's uh it's a dangling carrot. It's a bait. Undertale was a shit game. Oh, sorry, wrong bait. Nice. Thank you. Nice, nice. I don't doubt that he's waiting for us to follow. I just this is all my fault. If, if I had just been maybe a little bit smarter, had a little more clear head, maybe I wouldn't have put Safeguard and Mal in danger. And Well, it sounds like Merrick's is rounded in this group as well. What did, what did he want? It was the blueprints. Yeah. Yeah, Kavir, remember the, yeah, the blueprints that we found in, uh... Apartment? The, yeah, apartment. Yes, he... Well... Dorlin, we, uh... We had a... Um... Fellow... Well, an individual who had accompanied... Um... What was your, uh, what was your, uh, uh, your friend's name? Grandma, the one who tried to be able to fight us outside of my home again. Alistair. On the battlefield. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Him. We were able to take one of them alive as we were ambushed, and we had learned some information from. Him. We had shown um, a blueprint with the intentions of trying to be able to assist with some memories. And we had learned that well we're, we're starting to learn about something that may have happened to the Mornland. The day of morning. I'm wondering if yes. And I'm wondering about how it all kind of ties here together. Something on the level of a large scale transportation. Something that would have, in a way, picked up an entire continent, but put it somewhere else. Leaving something else here in its place. Technically, it would be impossible. The amount of Eldritch machines and magic required 
I was thinking here as well, but I... Here, let me... I feel like I'm not doing it just. Give, give me one second, and I... Um... I whisper a few um, arcane words, and I do some somatic components, and I draw forth a long strand here from my head, and I pass it over here to Jorlin, and I say, I, I, I put it in his hands, and I clasp both hands, and I say, concentrate on this, and I should be able to... Um, transfer some of that thought so he might be able to view it. Okay. <laughs> That's so so, so wild. Yeah, which thoughts are you transferring? The um part of the interrogation and hopefully not all of it. Okay. Just the part talking about the Eldritch machine. You know what? Actually put the whole interrogation and in, he should probably learn as much as he can. Okay. You see him kind of, like, close his eyes. Uh, you're clasping his hands, right? Yes. You kind of see him, like, as you do that, he closes his eyes and leans his head back. And there's, uh, about three or four minutes go by, about as long as the interrogation was, and he opens his eyes. Kind of, like, pulls his hands away from you. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the making of a ten-year-old. That's what you had trouble with. No. <laughs> the things that were said there. That, that was your problem? No, that, that, no, <laughs> no, the problem is... Show me the blueprints. First, um... I retract the memory and... Put it back put it into back. myself so I don't forget it. Um... But uh, I reach back into our wonderful bag of holding. Thank you, Al. Mm -hmm. Shout out, shameless plug. <laughs> um, and I pull out the blueprints, um, and I look over and I say, "Why don't we go somewhere more private instead of just here on the deck of a ship? It's a beautiful view and all, but I think we might need somewhere to sit, somewhere to grab a drink. It's I don't know if you all can track, but." I feel like we've been awake for more than 24 hours. No, you guys... You took a long rest at the house. That's right. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, we did. Yeah, it's... But with everything going on, it is about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. With the travel... With the traveling from Dragonmark Towers back to Upper Dura to the ship to what's going on, the fight and all that, it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, oh, regardless, I would like a drink. Jeremy, are your quarters available? Of course. I have plenty to drink, and I'll call for food. Okay. Uh, do -do -do -do. This one. Hold on. I have your cook's name. Lupin. That's what I was looking for. Lupin. 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 Yep, there it is. Lupin. <laughs> I was like, it was something stupid. <laughs> Uh, Lu uh, Professor Lu uh, Lupin kind of like heads back downstairs to the kitchen area to prep you all some food and you all make your way into Drinma's quarters again I put my feet up and I ask uh, would anyone like uh, anything to drink thank you no no what do you have Drinma okay whiskey's all around so I pour <laughs> One, two, three, four glasses of whiskey. Why take the bottle? Why take the bottle? Alrighty. All right. Jorlin kind of grabs it. Grabs grabs his glass of whiskey. Don't don't be shy. Don't be shy. Cats From home or during travel? I'm sorry, you were talking. What was that, Bryant? Or during travels, is this whiskey from Thrain or? Uh, you know what? The name it escapes me. There was a couple of bandits that we had. Uh, they they kindly gave it to us in, a, in, in as a peace offering of all things. But um, I don't know where they had found it right there. It's okay. He kind of like chuckles. Bottoms up, then everyone. 
What'd takes you say? the whole shot. What'd you say, Pete? Kavir kind of shoots his back. <laughs> and Pat Benatar look, is, is kind of creeping over there by, by, by like the door, kind of like Scooby doing her way, <laughs> trying to look her way in. Um, and she's going to try and sneakily make her way in. And make it seem like the try make girl make it seem like it seem like she was there like the whole time. Make a stealth check for cat. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like uh, twenty. So that's a natural two. <laughs> plus seven. <laughs> plus seven. So that's twenty seven. No one notices cat coming. Nope been here the whole time. Mm -hmm. As you all take your shots, uh, you get that hard just like standing to the right. <laughs> Don't be shy, Cat. Please help, She's help yourself. She's there and she is just kind of just sitting over there um, um, in a chair in the corner and just licking her paw and she's going to look up and say, not one for me. Well, I, you know, Kavir, that was supposed to, you know, sip on and, and to enjoy um, you're more than welcome to another cup, obviously. No one's gonna address the cat in the room. She's here, she's been here the whole time. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> and it's just sitting untouched. <laughs> Kavir, the blueprint. Yes. Um, I walk over there to the table. I try to be able to find a good enough space to put it on. I kind of tap Drima's, uh, uh, Drima's feet, try and be able to make enough room there on the table. Ah, so, uh, uh, it was a thousand and one to get me on your good or to get on my good side, but I'll let it slide. Perhaps just this once. And he puts it there on the table and spreads it out wide so that the rest can be able to see. Um, <laughs> spreads it wide for everyone to oh, see. I... Hell yes! <laughs> Crazy. Um, Joran kind of walks up and puts his fingers <laughs> on the blueprint and starts tracing over it. Where did you find this again? It was in, uh, this, the professor, Professor Ulrin. No, that's your pilot. No, right. was, was it Ulfric? Sorry, Ulfric. I had Ulrin written down. Ulfric, Ulfric thank you. Ulfric, Ulrin, Ulster. There's a lot of There Uls. was a lot of A's in the beginning of this story, I know. Yeah, yeah, Ulfric. It was in Ulfric's, uh, it was kind of like a secret layer or basement, uh, underneath, underneath the floorboards in his apartment. It's kind of like oh, almost. Places. It was like a. It was almost like a like a shrine, if you will, like collection. Was that, was that the only thing down there? No. No, we found other things. Um. And I pull out like the ransack room that I had just thrown inside <laughs> the a, a bag. Bag of holding. Start pulling out like. Like tapestries uh, that that were in there. Uh, um, There's a pa and, uh, painting. Um, yeah. Paintings. Yeah. Um, and I, as I'm kind of dumping this all out, um, uh, a um, a dragon shard falls out there as well. They, yes, I found this in here here too. And which dragon shard was it? Oh fuck. Stand by. I want to say it was an Eberron dragon ship. Okay. Uh, but let me confirm. Equipment. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. It was a. Dra it was an Eberron dragon shard. So actually, literally just throwing. A lot of crap out of a bag that should not be holding it all. Bag of holding. Jorlin looks at the uh, Eberron Dragon Shard and then like the... What is con what you guys grabbed were the layouts of Flameskeep and Thrain. Mm -hmm. And then looks back 
towards the blueprint. What concerns me is these designs, this blueprint, they're Merrick's designs. Merrick's designs? It, you know I, that I, it, I'm looking at it? Huh? I, yes, I can. He showed me the blueprint for that. What did he, that blasted belt? What did he call it? Um, it was the belt he gave I those. The, I forget the name of the belt, but I remember that he used it as a way to travel into the 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 people we hired. It, it was. I think he called it the belt of negation. Yes. The way he... Yes, he used it to, to, to be able to ensure that, that, that those traveling into the Mornland could remain safe from the poisonous fumes surrounding that land. Apparently it worked. The individual... So he says. Be, so he says. But, but it's... I'm wondering if... I'm sorry, please. Go ahead. It's the designs. It's how it's drawn up. It's how it's written. It's it's drawn up and written exactly like the blueprints he showed me for that belt of negation. This is clearly a blueprint created by Merrix. Hmm. Why would Alfred have? Well, that would be have a dealing with Merrix. That would be the question. And then you say Alistair and his companions that you interrogated are what I saw saying it this is something that can be used to <clears throat> transport a nation. But for that to happen you would again with the magical energy that this is an Eldritch machine blueprint, but for a blueprint like this you did 30 of these around the country 50 so he would, on the, the so he would he country. would need a lot of resources a lot of resources he would a need lot a lot of power magical power i mean is this i assume this is you know generated by magical means the magic by the shards do you think enough shards would be able to power such a device can that be used as a source of power they might, but it depends on the shards. It depends on the power of the shards. I mean, with Eberron, Eberron geodes, Eberron dragon shards. I mean, those are harvested out in the shadow marches in Drom. Are there? Uh, are there? Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the shadow marches, but are there like quarries? Are there like, you know? Uh, uh, big caverns that they excavate and, and, and get these shards? Are they processed somewhere? The shadow marches are very weird. You have two distinct people. You have the druids mm -hmm. of the shadow marches that are strictly druidic. They stick to the earth. They don't use metals of any kind. And then you also have the other side of these druids that have refineries that that had human visitors and other visitors from around Corvair that showed them the ways of metal and infrastructure and machinery and they use it so it's call it clans which oh. clan Mao belonged to I don't know but he, we did pick her up from the shadow marshes I wish she was... I wish she was here. Well, we Maybe. do need her, I mean... Fear looks up and he says, This is starting to get very confusing. Give... Give me a moment. Um, Fear is kind of like collecting his thoughts. Um, trying to be able to discern where... Everything is all kind of connected to. And... <clears throat> he looks over to a... Uh, uh, to one of the side walls in the room. And he invokes his invocation of misty visions um, to put up um, a 15 foot or, or, or I, I, actually how, how, how big is the room as far as ceiling one? 
Uh, ceiling wise, you have. It's about 15 up. Okay. And that from wall to wall, 30 feet. Fucking enormous cabin. Okay. Uh, it's it, captain's quarters. It is the captain's quarters. I like to live a certain lap of luxury. <laughs> um, uh, Kavir sets up, um, a, uh, now it looks like a giant, uh, board, um, that has different, uh, pictures, uh, different people, um, ideas of blueprints, and they're all just kind of, like, strung together, um, trying to be able to make inner types of, like, of, of, like, connections here between one and the other. Uh, do uh, you trying to be able to put things out in like a physical form? Oh, I think I have some yarn lying around. Would that, would that help, Kavir? No need, no need. Just adjust it to be able to. Are we doing the sunny in Philadelphia scene? Oh, are so... we? <laughs> it's just... It is 100% that. Listen okay. here. <laughs> it's all connected. Listen. There you oh go. my god, it's so fucking good. I love it. That's good. <laughs> So we have, we have the Shadow Marshes, where Mal hails from, mm -hmm. and there are plenty of shards that are drawn from these marshes. Yeah, they have some type of connection that leads down here to their placement, fairly almost everywhere. But um, there are these Eldritch machines, potentially, that could be able to lead up here to what caused the morning to be able to occur. But we already have confirmation that that, that 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 this is how the morning had occurred. Um, we're still trying to figure out how exactly. But we're well, no one knows how that the day of morning happened. There's theories. I mean, this is just another theory to throw in. It's so far the best theory we've heard. Very true. I just. Oh no, 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 it's fine. Yeah, don't no worry about it. Yeah, no, it's good. Sorry, again, Kavir, I apologize. Continue. So we have this. And we have Merix, who is developing a prototype belt of negation to be able to send it a group into the Mornlands to be able to retrieve some type of an artifact. It was a Kyber shard, which I happen to have right here. He pulls it out um, from the inside of his jacket. Um, he says... And this was found, and when it was found here by the individuals here by myself, all of them were dead with the exception of one who seemed to have gone mad and eventually took his own life in the process. I'm trying to see how all these can all be able to connect, but where does Alistair fit in? With that's, that's what I don't know. Alistair... I mean, I've known him practically my whole life. He... Jordan, make a general intelligence check. General yeah. intelligence. Hi, the name is Intelligence. General Intelligence, you may have heard of me. Uh, ooh, I got a negative one right there. 14. You do have a letter. From your one shot. <laughs> Drinma recalling uh recalling slips out the letter and, and looks at it. Yeah remember the lights in. Remember Kavir, I remember you having a letter. I I had a letter as well. So she slips it out and she pulls it out and kind of gives it to I guess gives it to Kavir. Is, does this make any sense? Mr. DM. This, uh, this is the letter that kind of got you guys to know that you're kind of connected in some way. This was a letter written by Ulfric to Alistair that had told Alistair that they do not like failure and they were to kill Drinma. This is the letter he got from the two mutineers on his ship Yep. going to Sharn to meet all of you. It was a, la a letter from Alistair that was written for Alfred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Irma, if you if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. and only because this might be able to play part in this continuation board. Mm -hmm. What was your failure? I didn't have a failure. It was a failure of Fail Alistair. Alistair. It was Alistair's failure. Yep. Apologies. And he's not much of a failure. Alistair's always had a keen mind and a strong will. I wonder what it was that he failed at. If he wasn't... If his failure was not to be tolerated. But then again, I mean... You were also... Sentenced to death by... These people here as well. <clears throat> I... Coming to my ship and... Through certain means, discovered that they meant ill will. It was a... It was a, a direct attack on me. And I... It's not like Alistair. Well, I say not like Alistair, maybe not the Alistair that I remember. It wasn't long... I, maybe a change in him. I... Like I said, Alistair and I have known each other practically our whole lives, and I, I feel like there's maybe been some resentment. And he always had to... Charmed? What's that? Could he be charmed? He's always been strong-willed. That's interesting. I maybe. But... And again, we've also come across an Archfey here as well. Is it... I, I mean, is it possible to be... corrupted? I can't put my finger on it. I can't single out a, a, a time that maybe I saw a change in Alistair, but it felt like something maybe dark in him. And I always just assumed that he had a grudge against me. When Druma says the word corrupted, um, fear starts kind of just like moving his hands closer back to putting a uh, uh, the kyber shard back in his uh, uh, back in his jacket. Okay. But I... I don't know. My... When I heard that it was Alistair coming for my life, I... I wasn't scared. Wasn't angry. Maybe more... Maybe more hurt. But I'm not one to just roll over and die, you know? That's why I've made a name for myself, because I stood up and fought. But to then oh, see him outside of your place, I don't know, just, it seems like all those emotions came and boiled up inside of me. And to hear him talk about this eldritch machine just kind of confirmed my worst fear that he was somehow in this. Maybe too deep. Well, I certainly can't blame you. I, I, I certainly can't blame you. In those positions, it's entirely understandable. Our mutineers fight against your life. Now that we're all, you know, discerning that there is something much deeper going on here. At Dorland, help me me weigh in on this. I'm... You, you mentioned that we're here to rewrite a draconic prophecy. Not rewrite. It's... Think of it as a... A map. That can go any which direction. That if X, Y, and Z are filled, it will happen, but if X happens, but Y doesn't, then Z can never occur. What is our end game? What are we attempting to do to, to, to happen with this? X or Y? Hell, well, for me, I'm hoping to stop Z. Z is Z. Either the full release, potential release, partial release of any and all overlords. So you're saying X and Y have already happened? X has happened. 
As I said, as I said before I showed my true form, X has already happened. So what was X exactly? So we can develop a timeline. If scale, flame, and creature of fur meet with rock, half-blood, and dreams occur, the lines between life and death might blur. Just us? Just us being here? Those coming here together were enough for the getting of this problem. Is that, is that my understanding? Yes, the beginning. So. But I would not have any agent of the, the Bleak Council or Lords of Dust make you meet. Is, so what's next? Die, like us dying, is that, is that why? What's, what's why? The second part of the stems I had. An undead queen may rise if the flame extinguish and dies when the golden worm flies. The golden worm. Wasn't that the... the gold... was it gold savior? Yes. I remember that. Jorlin, do you know who this gold savior is? I guess it's a gold dragon, if memory serves me right. Is... A golden dragon? Is that a relative? Is that like a distant cousin? Or like an uncle? Old friend? Old friend. Does he have a name? Or is he just known as the golden savior? had a name in Draconic which I will share one day but he calls himself the Golden Savior he's anything but he disappeared we lost track of him about eight years ago during a during one of the battles of the last war. I was unaware that dragons were even involved in the war. They weren't involved in the war. He was not in his form. Well, his his true form. Which I guess makes sense as to why hell. We lost him in Shadukar. <clears throat> Very bloody you, battle. You, you what? We lost him in Shadukar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. <clears throat> the beer's kind of scratching his head. He's like, am I supposed to know what that means? Apparently, Drimma does. I, <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. No, it's... Go ahead and con continue with your story, Jorlin. Make a deception check, Jorlin. Oh, shit. Make an insight check. Yes, make an insight check if you did. So please. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, nope, shit. Wait, no, let me... Yep, thirteen. Thirteen. Sorry, I rolled a d12. Twenty-three. Kavir, are you inciting? Well, Kavir got a seven. <laughs> so uh, Kavir, you kind of just like. Yeah. On the other hand, I feel like she's insightful, yeah. right? She is. She's very insightful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Okay. It's like I okay, feel so like she's Kavir, pretty insightful. Sure I'm cat. Yeah, Kavir, don't you, bully the uh, damn you don't you just like okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it means nothing. But uh, Cat and Vishara kind of catch on to that. Oh, is that nothing? And she clearly knows something, but she doesn't want to share. 
I, it's sorry. I, I I interrupted. Go go ahead, Jorlin. It's you know this 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 place you talk of this this solitaire, whatever the place you you talked about. Shadukar. So that's it. I don't know what he was doing there, but it was a well for Thranian. It was a terrible defeat. He didn't. This 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 golden savior. Do, do you? I I don't know. Do you know what he looked like when he was when he was in the a, a form that didn't look like a dragon? I mean, was I did not. Do you have a name that he went by? Was it like Steve? He liked to go by many names, but the one he liked to use the most. The one he would always go towards if he ever met a new person and would introduce himself. It was a very, it was a very stupid name. But he always went by Damien. Damien. I'm, I'm gonna. Re- I'm gonna remember that. Okay, Damien. That's a. That's a. That's a good name. Good. 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 Strong name. Is that an Eastern name? I. I don't. I don't know where that derives from. That's. Mm. I don't it's know where he got it. Really not his Christian name. <laughs> I love saying that. It's a good, strong Christian name. <laughs> I don't know where he got it, but... That was one he liked to use a lot. That's the one I, I knew of. But whatever he was doing in Shadowcar... Especially during that battle, I could only imagine. If I, unlike you, Drinma, I'm not a betting person. <laughs> I, I I don't even know whatever happened there. I, I well, this is the hypothesis? first time I'm hearing this. My hypothesis. I don't like to guess, but let's be real. Isn't that what a hypothesis is? Uh, he was using the chaos to look for something. If he found what he was looking for, then no wonder he's gone silent. If he didn't find what he was looking for, this explains why he's silent. Do we have any clues as to what he was looking for? Not a clue. The only thing him and I share is we're both exiles at this point. Difference in beliefs? Was a troublemaker and got kicked out? Why was he exiled? He was using the Draconic Prophecy to benefit himself. He was trying to manipulate the prophecy in a way that would benefit him, and only him. I'm not trying to manipulate the prophecy. I'm trying to make sure the prophecy stays on our side. The only difference is between me and the rest of the Cabal, I'm invested in it personally. While they sit at their planar observatories and their archives and deduce and deduct and observe and transcribe, Mm -hmm. I put my foot in. So, what does Cortana have to do with any of this? You and Cortana... ...and a lot of Kalishtar... ...are to make sure that the... ...seal around Dalcor stays. If you'd like to know how long that seal's been in effect, it's 40,000 years. Blink in the but, eye. Blink of the eye. But it's weakened. It's not weakened in the actual 
seal, but the Dreaming Dark, the Inspired, they grow stronger. They, they have used the last war to their benefit, to their own gains. And now that this so-called peace is in effect, they're going to do everything to destroy it. Sounds like them. Where do you and Cortana fit in it? I, I don't know how to sense inspired or these dark quarry. My focus is the Lords of Dust, the Bleak Council, but these dreaming dark, these inspired, they are just as cunning and manipulative as the Lords of Dust. Don't let it. That's where you fit in. Also, too, uh, if you want to finish your drink, it was right there. I don't know if you knew this, uh, Vashara, but your drink's right there. Please, again. You don't have to be polite. Enjoy. I, I don't drink, Drenma. I, 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 I hear it's just not clicking, but it, it, that's there for you. Okay, no, no that's, for, that's there for you. Drenma, can you make another intelligence check at advantage? Advantage, hey. Ooh. Intelligence check? Boy, boy, I'm great with those. Okay, thirteen. Thirteen. Was that with advantage? That was with advantage. Negative one. I have a minus one intelligence. Yeah. So. Hold on one sec. I'll be right back. All okay. right. Well, Jordan. Yes. Hi. Um. You also remember. Mm hmm During your one shot. Mm hmm That he is also the. Technically in charge of Agmoir Keep. Who is? Alistair. Alistair. Agmoir Keep? Yes. Angwar. A N G W A R. So there's another idea you might have of where he could be going. Okay. Is it where, if in, in Drinma's recollection, where would Agmoir Keep be in relation to Silver Keep? Flame Keep. Why am I keep calling it Silver Keep? Flame Keep, you fucking Silver idiot! Flame. Silver Flame Flame Keep. Yes, I know. I've been. I know. I've been it alive on this for forty years. What's that? It, it is south of Shadow Car. It is south of Flame Keep. Isn't? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the map. Isn't? We would have to pass Flame Keep to get no. to Shadow Car, right? No, Agmar. Agwar Keep, yeah. you'd pass Agwar Keep to get to Flame. Okay, Flame. so it would be in some kind of direct line, relatively. In between there. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Drinma, after drinking quite heavily, I would say to the point of probably intoxication. Of course. Um, of course, right? Uh, you know... Alistair kept... He talked about this other keep here. You know, it was Agmar. That's what it was. I can't remember if it was a shithole or not. It sounds like it's a shithole. But it would be outside the confines of... Flame Keep. It'd be under the radar. It would, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Sorry, um... Talking to myself. Uh, whew, long day. I have an idea. Kavir. You're... You're a smart guy. Okay, yeah. This, this would make sense. Does it make sense? It makes sense. So what do you think? I didn't even tell you. <laughs> Silly. Oh, Jirma. Here, maybe you... you... Uh, Nothing against you. Yeah, Here, yeah. Please put your thoughts. And I grab her mug, and I start drinking from it. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, it's a little bit... It's... Ooh. Yeah. It's a little... Ooh. It's a little stronger than what the rest of you were drinking there. Sorry. 
So you're holding back on the good stuff for all of us, I see. Uh, you know, Captain, Captain, Captain's Captain privilege, Earth. Captain's privileges, yes. I, re- I was recalling, I recall a time in Flamekeep, and Alistair kept talking about this, this other, this other structure. It was outside of Flame Keep, Agmoir Keep, but I, I'm, it's kind of secluded if memory serves me right. It's not really, I don't think just any passerby would kind of know it, but that wouldn't make sense, wouldn't it? If you had taken hostages, you probably wouldn't bring them back home, would you? You don't bring... Well... You don't bring prisoners to your table to dine with, right? You don't... I mean, over the course of my... Bounties that I've found, or at least have been commissioned with, it's never been something that is that, that I've always found that something that someone would bring back here to their... their home. I mean, their first place of residence is... I mean, would typically be the one that would be searched here first. It would have been too easy. Exactly. And this Alistair, he seems like a smart man. Very. He's so cunning. I wouldn't wouldn't put it so far as to him almost expecting that we would go there to his home. Possibly meet some type of resistance. I mean, frankly, if we went straight to Flame Keep, there would be heavy resistance. Yes, absolutely. It would. It would not be just like a hey, hi everyone. Unless we went under the guise of something else. Just whatever was in this bottle here just made me remember. It didn't. Like I said, he just wouldn't antagonize us and bring us bring us back home. No, I think he would. I think he would pull us in a different direction. Make us want it. Maybe even suffer for it. And he's got Mal and Safeguard and, I don't know, Merricks. I mean, I mean, take it for what it is, but... I mean, having Merricks is arguably as good, if not better, than the Blueprints. Considerably. It seems like he... Also seeing how he owes us all money here as well. (laughs) Yeah, that fucker. I'll teach him to skip paying me, but... That's the one that has 2,000 platinum. Hey, listen, God. I shake my fist at you. (sighs) I'm just... I mean, don't get me wrong... Thrain, I mean, Thrain is quite militant. We're using... Well, so, uh, also, with it being, you know, the capital. Not even just the capital. I mean, y- yes, it's it's a... It, it, is a it, it is a heavy bastille of warfare. With... I guess, with religion stoking the fire in their souls and them kind of having a way of, you know, combatantness. Those two forces are very deadly. When you'll fight for something, especially when it has your, your soul on the line, it's a powerful motivator. Imagine the untapped potential of an Eldritch machine. And Thrain knows plenty of of magics and individuals that can use magics. Powerful ones. Having this knowledge right here concerns me greatly. I I don't say they would I don't think they would use it for evil, but I fear I fear their use of maybe for good means might lead to the destruction of 
others or even themselves. Something that strong. What's that? In there. In there. It could be nothing that powerful doesn't have some sort of consequence. Kavir, make an intelligence check. Mm. Hmm, <laughs> you say. I ha, having an individual that knew, knows that much, and Merrick's knowing that much. I don't Fine see how that can be good. Here. Hey, nice. Hey. Nineteen. Nineteen, good sir. Nice. As we discussed this, you remember the conversation you had with Corvin through your sending stone when he was in Thrain. And how he said that the council had changed in terms of their very persona, how they were acting, what they wanted. Now we'll relay that information. Okay. Seems like that it seems like that the council was in the middle of some type of change. Back before all of this happened, this mass transit of 300 plus. Corbin was there in Thrain, trying to understand something here with the Cardinals. I didn't understand exactly what it was that he was doing. But he said that things had gone awry for him. Well, after the Cardinals making some form, some form of a change, and he was ready to pack up his bags and leave and quit his, well, quit his uh, uh, his end of the bargain. It's something that we don't normally do, really ever. Perhaps I need to reach out here to Corbin, trying to find out exactly what it was that happened. Kavir, K- yeah, you 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 talk of. You know, Corbin going to Thrain for a job. Who... Who hired Corbin to go to Thrain? Was that That also Jorlin, or was it a... Jorlin Shaggy said, it was not me. No. no. I originally had planned to hire both Kavir and Corbin, but... He said he had business to deal with in Thrain, a... Bad contract. That the council needed explanation on. But interesting, the the Cardinals wouldn't, frankly, just wouldn't let anyone just come in and be like, "Hey, you know, I'm trying to help out. You need something? I'll I'll help you." That who does that? It would have to be either one of the Cardinals. I mean, I may, maybe Jayla. I I don't know. At this all happening, um, I reach into my bag of holding and I pull out the setting stone um, here for Corbin. And I look here to the rest of the group and I say, well, I got some answers there. And I hold the setting stone and I, I speak into it saying, Corbin, I need information on Thrain. Who hired you? What exactly you were doing there? It's all fitting into a bigger piece. The message is received, but there is not an immediate reply. Well, he we're ending. Break. Oh, you motherfucker! So we're going to. Refill up on drinks, go to the bathroom, do all that, and we're going to take a break. We will be back in a few minutes or so, because we always cut out our break, so. <laughs> You'll never know, haha. <laughs> yes, we'll be right back, everyone. All right, I have to take out the bill. Bye. Bye. And we're back. Or did we ever leave? Or did we ever leave? You never, <sighs> no, we did. I had to walk the dog. We got, we refilled our drinks, did our bathroom break, so we are back. Picking up where we left off, Kavir, you had sent a message to your brother with through the Sending Stone. The message had been received. 
but you didn't get an instant reply. Oh, and by the way, my wife is down here on the floor. She's doing stretches. She'll be back up in a second. Um, about <laughs> one or two minutes go by, and then your sending stone begins to vibrate. I answer. Sorry, uh, Ojor and I were getting passage to uh, our first stop. Apparently, they had a relic stolen from them. And we were tasked, I was tasked to find it, and I couldn't find it. But what I can tell you was it apparently was a uh, green crystal with uh, yellow veins and a yellow pulsating light in the middle. I don't know if that's much help to you, but I couldn't find it. I didn't find it, and they were quite agitated with me. And that's the message. I'm going to respond back, and I'm going to say, who was it that hired you? And we didn't get much time to speak earlier, but I may have come across what you were looking for. <clears throat> uh, about another minute goes by. Huh? Pull up the note real quick to make sure I have it. Okay, yeah, I do. Alright, this is the right one. <laughs> um, it was one of the Cardinals. He went by... Car Cardinal Mio. And if you found what I was looking for, how did, where did you find it? Uh, that's the end of the message. How many charters does, uh, does the Sending Stone have again? Uh, this is the homebrew one I gave you. It has three, and you you've t you you've, you have used two so far. Yep. Yup. <clears throat> I'm gonna respond back here with the last of the uh, here with my last charge. I found this on the mission that I was assigned to as you were heading to Thrain. Merricks had sent individuals to Mornland and they returned with a Kyber Shard. I have it in my possession. Is this what you're looking for? That's my message. You can reply to this message. <laughs> nice. You should have been like, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> um, about three minutes go by, the message is received. And you kind of deduce that he's trying to find the proper wording since this is going to be your last message for the day with this sending stone. If it's a green shard with yellow veins and a pulsating yellow light in the middle, then yes. And if you had found it that was the job that Jorla and Merrick hired you for. I, the fact, the fact that a coincidence like this were to just happen scares me. 
If you find any more, get rid of them. And that's the end of the message. Oh my god. Is that your knuckles? Or did you step on, like, packing peanuts? Oh my god. Holy shit. Great. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> um, as you get that last message, there's a knock at the door, Drenma. You can wait. Cap, I need to know where we're going. Just flying aimlessly, I, I don't like doing it. Fly aimlessly, just another minute longer, please. I'll hold you to that. Dorlin looks at you, Kabir. Well, what did you learn? A carnal by the name of Mio was the one who had hired him. Do I recall this cardinal? You do, but make an intelligence check. You got it. Come on, baby. Fuck yes. I in. Uh, that is minus one right there. 17. My wife is going to use guidance for you. Oh, there we go. Wee. Uh, 19. 19. You do know this, Cardinal. This Cardinal was... technically best friends with your dad. And also helped you in your training. Continue, Kabir. There was... Mission was to retrieve a lost relic. And it, of all things, surprisingly, matches the description of this plot the Kyber chart again. To which Jorlin looks up. Exactly. But what I'm wondering is if he was hired by the Cardinals to go find it, and Merrick has sent me on the same mission, or on a separate mission, at the exact same time, to go retrieve something in the Mornlands, from the heart of the Mornlands of all places. How would he know something was there, let alone be able to go find it there and have that information relayed to him so quickly as the Cardinals were searching here for something? It's These coincidences do not add up. With that, Jorlin kind of takes his cane and hits the ground and tosses up and catches it. Welcome to the game. Who is her? Her? You said her dragon shard. Who is her? This cabra shard is different. It's... A... Kyber shard that binds an overlord. Well, I think we just found out what they're trying, how they're going to power the Eldritch machines, and they're being manipulated. 
Like we need to make sure that it stays safeguarded as much as possible. I don't care for things of great power to fall into the hands of those that are already more powerful. Is that that's the only one you had, right, Kadea? That I mean, Didn't, there was we there wasn't uh, there something very similar in Ulfric's domicile. No. Didn't the change oh, link that, go into one? That change the bitch. That's it. She had, she had one as well. Did you grab it? Oh, so did. I let something like that just simply sit out there for the public. There's... So we have two of these. Kyber, are they shards? Crystals? They're, rocks? They're shards, but they're crystals. These are, they are Kyber dragon shards, but these are crystals of Sul Katesh. Kabir, may I see the other one? Okay. Here, hesitantly, you kind of pulls it out of his bag of holding. Pulls it out. Cool, make a constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm about to oh, try to convince God. you to not show it to him. That is a 14. 14! Wow. You hear in a language you don't understand. What are your languages? Elven, common, and primordial, correct? Let me confirm. That is correct. Okay. Uh, you hear something in a language you don't understand, but you kind of shake it off, and as you grab it, this crystal, this dragon shard, is different as in it's mutated the veins are bigger veinier and the what the pulsating light is no longer pulsating pulsating it's and veinier shining. hell yeah it's no longer pulsating you said pulsating and veinier that's awesome i know <laughs> you don't expect me not to crack a grin at pulsating and veinier. Uh, you're a lot smarter than the other thing. Oh, Sorry. Pulsating and veinier was my, my thing I was cracking up. Go ahead. I Continue. Think, might be the name of the next episode. <laughs> pulsating and veinier. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Hold on. Hold on. Pulsating <laughs> and veinier. How the fuck do you spell veinier? Oh, well, that's good enough. I'll just do your best. V I N I E R. There you go. Anyway, Gavir. I look down at this and I'm actually trying to see if I might be able to connect the two here together. Like if they may have been able to potentially join here together. Like some a, way. Like a little boop. Like a puzzle piece. Like a boop. Okay. <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. No, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. <gasps> oh boy. Oh boy. Good thing he's so wise. Very wise man here. So wise. Uh, yeah, my wisdom with a uh, plus zero. <laughs> here we go. It's a natural fucking 20. No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That is incredible. Uh, Drinma. Yo. Al. Vishara. Kat Benatar. And Jorlin all need to make dexterity saving throws. Oh. <gasps> what have I done? 14. 14. Okay. 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 Uh, dexterity saving throw? Dexterity saving throw. 19. 19. Dexterity save. <laughs> That's incredible. That was so incredible, dude. 
17. I know, right? That was so incredible. I threw that, my... was that, that was the time to pull the natural. Yeah, no shit, right dude. No shit. I threw my pen and I don't know where it went. Ow. Yeah, I, I'm going to roll for Al. I know she can hear us, but. That was incredible. That's it. See, that's why I like recording these things, because shit like that happens. Okay. So, uh, what did Cat Benatar get? 17. 17. So, everyone succeeded except Vishara. <laughs> so, hold on, let me roll. All right. Uh, so as you do this, D6. as you take your crystal that you've held and then the one you got from the changeling, they start to fuse. And as it does, a literal magic burst, an eruption of pure concentrated magic explode. <laughs> you being in the epicenter are fine, Kavir. Drunma. Yo. You take... 14 points of nope sorry because you you got you you succeeded yes <clears throat> you take seven points of a force damage force damage got it okay um i imagine cat would probably take the same yes uh al takes yep. seven points of force damage you take 14 points of force damage <sighs> I drop the shard and immediately start trying to be able to look over everyone to just try and be able to see who is okay and what's happening. <laughs> just... Uh, the shard, it, most of them have kind of been blown back. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I have to do Jorlin. I'm so sorry. Yeah, Jorlin's good, so he took seven. He probably has like 5,000 HP or something like that. Uh, no, because it's a typical NPC eight hit point. He's good. <laughs> out, out of curiosity, if he breaks his human form, would a giant dragon just appear? Yeah, and break your ship. Uh, okay. Yeah, he rolled a natural 17 plus his modifier. Oh, holy so. shit, dude. Oh. I almost killed us all hey, Drew, you gave everyone their Featherfall coin, right? Now would be a great time. Hey, okay. I so should, okay. So let's let's start with this. So she's laying down, and you're being knocked back, and just like, I hope my I hope my whiskey's okay. Ah, uh, fuck. Um, so, kind of forgot. Um, Kavir, uh, Vishara, you, you might want to take these right here, and I hand them their feather fall coins. This probably would help. If something went really bad, you know, like right now. Jorlin kind of uses his cane stand up. I almost turned into myself again. <laughs> Out of no, curiosity, how had... much more was needed? Three points. <laughs> like 10 HP. Oh my god. Well, no, because he used polymorph. Yeah, he's good. Sorry, I, mean, I was going off a typical still, NPC. Still, he's uh, like relatively human, so he probably can't take a shit ton. Yeah, because polymorph, I think you take on you take on your own stats. So never mind, he was good. No, no, with polymorph, you take on the stats of the uh, of whatever you turn into, and that is your health. You use as, as like temp health, and then when it drops, it's just like wild shape. You change back into it. Uh oh. It's it's fine. Everyone's fine. Everyone's good. Sorry, I need to make a con. I need to make a uh, concentrate uh, constitution saving throw for Jorlin because it's a concentration based spell. What for polymorph? Yeah, it because is. he cast it on himself. You are concentrating, and he's concentrating on the polymorph. Can I? That's can I, that we never really did really correctly. Can I instill the rule of cool? Can I give him guidance? <laughs> Not as a reaction. Uh, 
I mean, it's relative Roll. to the amount of damage he took. Green cover. I'll check his stats. Look, okay. if it happens, it happens. It's all part of the. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we're, we're, in, we're in very, very big trouble. Um. Oh no. I think your ship's about to explode, Grandma's. Oh fuck. I have to double check his stats. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Natural four. <laughs> no. Plus 16 because he is proficient in constitution saving throws. So 20. Plus 16. Plus 16. I mean, he's also a... Ancient silver dragon. The ship not going to explode. He's good. Pulling more stays. I had to double check stats. That's why he said that. Almost reverted back to himself. I'm just kind of taking this all in right now. Just give me one second right here. I just was like... Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Your ship has not exploded, so that's good. I closed my eyes just for a moment. So take these while we're on the same page. Please take these Featherfall tokens. Put those in your inventory. Put those in your inventory. Pretty please. Done and done. <laughs> Jorlin, I think you're fine. <laughs> I was actually worried for a second. <laughs> it's like... I was worried for many seconds, not just a single one, but all of them. Yeah, I had to double check his stats, because it's like, yeah, he's proficient in... Although it's, although it makes a really funny story, it's just like, this makes sense. <laughs> and everyone dies. <laughs> well, good campaign, everyone. Yeah, good campaign. <laughs> ten episodes. Here we, we are. We made it ten. Yeah. We made it ten. That was pretty good. Wow, I actually think I had a tiny heart attack. <laughs> um, Kavir. The crystal is now Oops. one. That is much bigger. Yeah. And veinier. And it is glowing. Like well, a lamp in a dark room glowing. Just like... Ugh. I can't say that I well, didn't anticipate something like this happening, but... I'm still amazed by... It was incredibly clever, Kavir. Especially the part where we all almost died. It did hurt. I'm so sorry, all of you. Hey, you have to break a few eggs, right? Yes. That was not an egg. <laughs> that is not the type of analogy I would use. Hey, when in Rome. Dynamite, perhaps. <laughs> when As in, you all are doing this. Win in Sharn, you know. I'll reverse little... into your quarters, Drinma. Yep. Is everyone all right? <laughs> We're, we're good. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. We're, we're good. No. We're good. How are you? Uh, well, <laughs> despite the fact we lost control of the ship for a few seconds, great. Can can we? Can you tell me where we're going? Cause Cap. <laughs> what in the gods? It, it has been a crazy couple of hours, yes, I know. Where are we going? And I'll leave you alone, because I don't want to know. 
Alrin, do you remember Magra? Angwar? That's it. Sorry, drinks. Yeah, that's where we picked up Cat Benatar. That's the one. And then, you know, we had to activate the Shitter Soul. Yes, yes. Yeah. That was also quite a word it. That was also quite a day. Yeah. Is that where we're going? I think that's our head. Okay. We well, need to. Uh, I'm gonna get my second hand ready because that's a 32-hour trip. It'll take some time. We need to be careful too. So go normal, but when we get closer, don't don't shoot off the cannons. I think that would be wise at the moment. Yes. Should I ready the cannons? Yeah, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. All right. We're not all hands on deck, but we're like a couple hands on deck. But when we're, you know, like an hour out, hands on deck. Yeah, I, you, you, yeah. Okay. Whatever you, whatever you did, don't do it again. No promises. No promises. I'll try my best though. Cap, I love you. This is our ship, but that was some scatter shit. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I felt it as well. And as he says that, you see a Lupin kind of walk in, <laughs> stumbling. Food? <laughs> he just sets it down and kind of stumbles his way out. Thank you, Lupin. Thank he looked a little shaken up. Was it just me or did he look a little shook, shooken up? I think he took a few hits. I mean, it was a good thing that it wasn't a day for soup. I mean, it would have been really bad. It would have been all over him. He probably would have more burns than he already has, but... You know. The profession of being a chef, I guess. So anyway, I took out the Aberon shard. I can try to to use that one to it here, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. Okay. <laughs> Although. Say, I might have to freaking kill you if you do that. He's on to something right here. What if we take all of them and put them together? Jorlin kind of looks at all of you. I'm going to go lie down. No, no, Jordan, listen, before you start, don't head out right here. What if someone used Mage Hand to put that in and then just like threw it like a, like a, like a bomb? Jorlin, stop moving. Jorlin, come back. No, no, listen, if he puts it on and then he's already gone. Yeah, he's already gone. He hit, he did not stop walking. <sighs> Almost lost my cool there for a second. Meanwhile, there is a <sighs> big crystal. Shining crystal in the middle of your captain's quarters on the floor. Yeah. I need another drink. Goes and grabs another bottle. Okay. Uh, Vishara, I noticed that. Vishara, I noticed that you didn't. The, 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 the glass is gone because of, because of the, the thing right here. I'll pour you another one. Just, just again, don't have to be polite. Uh, it's now tequila. You really don't have to drink. Okay, well, I'm sorry. All I have is tequila, so. I'm, I'm. God damn it. You're making that cannon? You <laughs> son of a bitch. Drinma's, Drinma's, Drinma's funny thing is every time she has an interaction, she says the only she, the only thing she has is something, and it keeps changing. Because <laughs> <laughs> the first time it was rum, and then it was whiskey, and the next time it's tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Inside Jack. <laughs> she has a stockpile of just all kinds of liquor. <laughs> I I Brian. Fucking believe you. Four. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Four. Yeah, no. Boy. I got pee pee scared there for a while. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like still not over that. That literally scared the shit out of me. That could have been really bad. Could have been All bad. right, moving on. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
as as Druma gets done pouring tequila uh, for everyone. Um, well, Kavir, this has been quite an adventure we've had. There's still a lot of there's still a lot of things that we don't know, but I think we have I think we have our our route ahead of us. We obviously need to save Mal. We need to save Safeguard. Merrick's still up on the still up in the air. Probably should do that too. I don't kill him first. Well, that might be a good way to not have any uh, knowledge go into the wrong hands. He also saw money. We'll, we'll straighten that out first, but what does this I, I, what does this all mean, though? These shards, these rocks. I mean. I, frankly, I don't know much about them, apart... There's some energy in them. Never really cared much to know what they were because, well, frankly... A sword is just as effective as any other weapon. Well, I do agree in some cases. I... I may need a few minutes... ...to try and... ...learn what's going on. Is... Do you mind if I step out from Yeah, please. Um... Beer starts making his way back over here to his quarters. Are you leaving the crystal room. on the ground? What's that? Are you leaving the crystal on the ground? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, no. Hey, just Take asking. Him just Take asking. With him and throws him back over there to his quarters. And I'll be back. Shit. <laughs> Get a surprise poop. He needs to make a saving throw when he gets back. So. Oh dear. To a saving throw again. As as he leaves, Drima looks at the rest of the party. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Not sure, fun is how I would describe it. Meh. Got your blood pumping, didn't it? Listen, I hate to be a fat person, but find your way to your quarters, get some rest. We'll talk shortly. My my ship is your ship. But keep an eye open. I'm a little bad. <laughs> it's like in the okay. afternoon too, right? Yeah, it's like with everything that you've got you guys have done and all the talking, it it's about four, so only two hours have yeah. passed. I guess I was gonna say just find something to pass the time. Sharpen your skills, read a book. I was gonna go lie down. Lay stuff. lay down, take a little cat nap. Which <laughs> darnest thing, Cat Benatar, you know. I thought I saw her earlier, but after the whole kerfuffle. Is she still here? Who? Cat. Cat. Yeah, she she got hit by that blast. Oh, there she is. Oh my god. I, sorry, Cat. Didn't even realize it. But why don't you why don't you just kids skedaddle? Mommy needs a drink. Mommy needs a lot of things. <laughs> Mommy needs a lot of drinks. Mommy needs a new pair of shoes. Okay. So with it's from Sharn, it's about. I think you said like 30 some hours. It's from where you guys are at now, it's about a 33 hour trip, but the time passed, it's 31 hours. So okay. a day and 10 hours. Okay. 11 hours. No, seven hours. A day and a half. Math. Math. Sorry. Yeah, a lot of things going on in my head right now. Pete, wisdom saving throw. Hey, Pete. <laughs> wisdom saving throw. Oh, God. At advantage. Oh boy. Okay. First one is a 19. Okay, for a 21. Nice. 21. Second one was a natural one. Thank God it was at advantage. Yeah. Right? So as you pick up the now fused crystal and kind of like try to pocket it and walk out, you just hear. A familiar voice. 
Thank you, child. I appreciate that. And that's it. I would have made it over there to my room by now, yes. Oh yeah, you're good. I'm gonna pull out that shard. Okay. Lock my doors first. Okay. I'm gonna sit down in the middle of the room and I'm gonna hold it, sit down, press across applesauce, and just close my eyes and speak into it. Crunch, 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 Chris. Yeah. He's trying not to crunch. I know. And I'm gonna say. You're welcome, my lady. What? What happened exactly? You made me stronger. Remember how I told you to find other crystals? Like the one you have? I recall. My influence on this plane grows stronger now. Separated, I am weak. And those are fireworks, everyone. Sorry. Or gunshots. I don't fireworks. know. Fireworks. Um. Fun game to play. <laughs> Though I am bound by the flame, my influence is tied to these crystals, these shards. And now that you fuse two, I grow a little bit stronger. There's still one in Thrain. Only, are there only three? No. How many total do we know? I wish I knew, but with me being so... Well, with me being sealed away, it's hard to tell. If you were to find the next one and fuse it, I might have an answer or a I rough idea. I would hope that the discovering and infusing of these two wouldn't go unrewarded. Not at all. Wonderful disciple so far. A wonderful choice. Keep proving yourself. And rewards will come. That's more power, more knowledge. is in the realm of my possibilities, it shall be yours. I think I have a choice. You do to your child. But would you really reject my gifts? Of course not. Thing that our book of shadows here is looking a little empty. Give me 
some time and we'll fill it up. Trey, for the wonderful job you just did. Now rest up. Important work to do soon. Yes, my fair lady. And I put the uh, the shard away. Is it still sizable enough to be able to fit in my jacket? Yes, uh, it's sizable. It, instead of like a little crystal, the side, the palm that was like the palm of your hand. It it you can now hold it like this. It's pretty so good it's chunk. Still, pretty good nugget. Yeah, it's a good nugget, it, but it's still able to fit in your pocket without too much work. So you start running, and it's like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Boy, is that a nugget in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> hey. Hi. Drenma, how are you doing? So Drenma called everyone out, when she, after seeing everything and witnessing everything, just... Doesn't make any sense. It's Alistair and the Cardinals and this this Damien and Shadow Car. It could have been him. I don't know. Might have been him. No time to think about that, though. Gotta put on a smiling face, strut my stuff, and show everyone who's the captain here. The Shara. Anything you're doing? Or are you just resting after the resting after I got exploded. Hell yeah. Don't we all need a good rest after a big explosion? See, um, it's about, hey. like I said, hey. going... Uh, no. Um, you all proceed to, like, kind of relax and prepare yourselves for the long journey ahead, and as night, night time comes around, you all kind of relax after the, today's events and all you've learned and and proceed to have your long rest. You now may mark that. Bye. <sighs> Drinma. Yo. You don't have any dreams. You have for once in a while have a good night's rest <laughs> Cat Benatar also has a good night's rest doesn't really dream Kavir you dream of that moment where you fuse the two crystals together And as you dream of that moment, you almost feel like your blood boil, but not in a hurtful way. Like something was awakened inside you. You don't know what this was? But you feel a little more powerful, a little more stronger. ready for whatever you have to do. I know what I have to do. But I don't know how that, I don't know if I have the strength to do. There you go. It's 
son of a bitch. <laughs> Gavir, I am sending you a text, just so you know. <gasps> How come I don't get one? I'll be looking. There'll be a group chat later. Yeah? Sending some group chat. Hell yeah. We're gonna send each other us like kissy faces. Love you. Mwah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. They're all gonna be Waluigi kissy faces. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be something like that. So you guys have your long rest. Yep. Um, the eight hours. If you guys want to role play the next few hours, because you are your days away. Yeah. And it is now again ever on calendar. Oh, is confusing. I have to make sure I say the right day. In Trivago. No, you are no longer. No longer in Trivago. We're not. We're in. You're Nim. Yeah, Nim. This is the second of. This is um. Uh, mole, M O L. So the second of Nim. And the day is Mole, M-O-L. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to fast travel ahead, I will allow this. Yeah, Anna's shaking her head yes. She's saying yes. Mm. <clears throat> okay, we can fast travel, but we're going to say that um, Al spent the entire time just stuck to Jorlin in complete... Okay. Hi. <laughs> Jorlin kind of takes you under his... Figurative I almost, wing. Figurative wing. <laughs> and spends most of the time trying to understand, like, where you came from. How you aren't from Argon Essen, because it's quite confusing to him. Is there anything else you guys want to do? I'm going to read up here in my Book of Shadows, and I'm going to, um, probably around, like, nighttime, when, when we run, when I have a lot here on the deck, okay. I'm going to walk out there to the deck, and I'm going to start practicing some spells. Okay. Uh, Drinma would practice her sword fighting. She'd be all like on the on the deck of like the ship and everything too, kind of like Conan the Barbarian right there, and just be like, like a training okay. montage. Yeah, fucking yes. Around, now that's gonna ever keep you down. <laughs> <laughs> or or it could be like uh, Sylvester Stallone when he was training uh, as Rocky to, to take on uh, Ivan Drago, and you know there just you like. Go. Pushing shit Lots out. Of fire to play it the back. <laughs> Nishar is just gonna find a nice quiet place to meditate. Okay. Hey, um, did Al get a full night's sleep, or did he just get like a a dream light? Full night's sleep. Um, there's also gonna be a scene, and I'm not gonna role play it because I can't do two at once. But we're Cat Benatar. Um. Approaches Kavir with her two scrolls that she found. <laughs> she doesn't have one. She gave it to Kor. No, she found two other ones. Oh, you're all oh, the other two. Yeah, yeah. You're right. The if Kavir can be able to identify, them. in which case he would oblige. Okay. <laughs> I'll teach you to. I'll teach you to let me play Cat Benatar, motherfucker. Deal shit for me. <laughs> Look, okay. You cat bastard. So, give me a second. I gotta pull up the notes real quick. Anytime a cat lays down anywhere, it's free real estate. It's free real estate.
Okay, the first scroll... It is a ritual... Uh, ritual? Good God. Ooh, that, was, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. I think bad. I just had a stroke. Ritual. And it is the alarm spell. Hmm. Hmm. Opens up possibility. And the other. It is also a ritual spell. And it is detect magic. Mm. Interesting. Mm, yes, shallow and pedantic. I would be role-playing, speaking with Cat as I tell her what these things are, and I say, can I borrow these for a minute, as I begin to inscribe them into my grimoire. Okay. <laughs> and upon completing that, I would then... Uh, return uh, the books uh, to or, or I'm sorry, I, uh, the scrolls back here to her. Okay. So you uh, copy these scrolls into your book of shadows and the ink instantly dries and you know them. Cat takes the scrolls back. Um, anything else you guys want to do or head into the next day and get ready for Aguar Key? Hmm. <laughs> I could think of things, but I would say nothing at the moment. Nothing, nothing really daunting on me that we would want to do. So... I would like all of you to, if you are spellcasters, prepare your spells. Teachers, grab your spell bags. <laughs> I think I think about that almost every day. It's so wild. Teachers, grab your spell bags. We'll find these fucking trolls and kill their fucking asses. So about seven o'clock in the morning. Zirnma, uh, Alrin wakes you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shirtless, as she always is. Yes. Cat, yeah. we're almost there. Should I get? Should I prepare the cannons and get ready for a fight? I. I feel a battle ahead of us. Um, Al. Cat, Kavir, and Vishar are all woken up to Alrin basically screaming to wake everyone up in battle stations. Clasp everything on. Another montage scene right there. Just... <laughs> As... Um, Anwar Keep become, um, is available in sight. You see the flags of Thrain flying high. You see a lot of cannons, a lot of Warforged, and standing at the top of the gate is Alistair. I really like, have like the Star Wars, uh, uh, like Rebel Alarm that I was playing there for a second. That's that's what I thought it was for a second. It was. I I was yeah. like, ah, oh, sounds like, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Like, oh, that's pretty good. Well, I think he was except expecting a fight. think he's gonna get one. Kavir walks up and he's like, 
<clears throat> he, 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 he kind of just holding on to his book and just glowing, um, uh, just pulsating energy uh, from uh, sitting there in his right hand. It's like, we are walking into? I don't know what Alistair has for us, but our mission should, our mission is clear. We need to save those that he took from us. We can't allow them to make these Eldritch machines. We can't allow them to have any knowledge of it. It's clear that he's prepared, as are we. For God's sake, put a shirt on. <laughs> 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 And Chris is gone. <laughs> Oops, sorry. They quickly runs back to put on the show. Okay, they're already. <laughs> gives gives a heroic speech and just goes, "Oh, I'm completely naked. My bad." <laughs> Whoopsie. I'm Whoopsie. Her out. Oh. That was a little breezy. That was so fucking funny, by the way. That was so funny. That was great. <laughs> well done, sir. Uh, Alarin begins to slow the ship down. Mm hmm. Because he also sees the cannons and yep. the defenses of Agnoir Keep. And as he slows the ship down, you see. Uh, make a perception check with advantage because technically you would have a glass, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Which I actually think I have like navigation tools. Yeah. Yeah, navigate. You yes, you do have navigation tools. So make it an advantage. Fuck yeah, dude. Twenty two. Twenty two. You see Alistair hold up what looks like a white flag and wave you down. And as he does that, he drops it. And you see him kind of like retreat back into the key. That was easier than expected. We're just that intimidating. Yeah, what are we doing? <sighs> why would he bring... Why would he bring so many troops just to retreat back into the keep? Set her down. I mean, I can't really set her down, but uh, get her uh, close to the Get her ground. close. Is this a, yeah, you get her close. All right, so he kind of slowly approaches the keep. We'll say about 500 feet away from the main gate. That's, that sounds, yeah, that sounds fine. And as he does that, and he starts to slow the elemental down and lower the ship, you see the main gate open with... Mal, still bound and gagged. Mm, hell yeah. And Alistair uh, pushing her out. Slow, starting to walk towards the ship. Okay. Um, who's coming with me? I'll come. Who's coming with me? All right. Vishara's yeah. coming. Vishara, Kavir, yeah. Al. Double go. <clears throat> All right. So we'll head down. Okay. Do we want just everybody to go? Well, we'll say for now. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so Captain Atar, oh. Al, everyone's going down. Yeah, let's say that. So yeah, you guys, um, you guys drop the rope, uh, rappel down from the ship. For shits and giggles, make acrobatics checks. <laughs> what a dick. What a dick. 21. Acrobatics or, or, or athletics. Whichever you're better at. 21. 21. You're good. Whichever you're better at. That was what I was better at. for me. Okay. You got a 10. 10. 10. 
Okay, yeah. so I got a nat one with a plus two modifier. Nat one is an automatic failure. You fall Yeah, I got a 15. Face. Okay. Jurma, you're good. You've done this plenty of times. You just slide down the rope yeah. and... Superhero landing. You don't do the superhero landing because uh, it's bad on the knees. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Uh, Al, you get about halfway down and you're not used to this at all and you kind of lose your grip. Make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh dear. Oh my. Did you say make a dexterity? Yes. Yes. Drum roll. Mm. Follow nat one with a nat 20. I rolled a 16. 16. 16. So you you recover, but it still kind of hurts you. You take two points of fall damage. <laughs> two points of ground damage. Uh, and as you see Al kind of like lose their grip and fall and then try to recover and fall, you know, hit the ground. You also see Vashar like not doing well with this. She is like, yeah, like, oh, crap. Rope burn. <laughs> oh. Oh, I also had a plus two for my deck saving throw, so that would have been an 18. Yeah, you're fine. Still the two damage, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. You, 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 yeah, it's still two damage, but you, yeah, you, you recovered well enough. Vishara takes one point of rope burn damage. Yeah, Vishara mm -hmm. took... A, a point of rope burn damage because she's just like ow 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 ow, 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 ow <laughs> on the way down. Kavir, Cat Benatar, you're good. Hell yeah. So as you all land and I'm start just... making your way towards Alistair, <laughs> slow motion superhero. That's, that, that's it. Just as as Al's like. And Vishar is like... Mal is trying to say something, but again, since she is bound and gad, you guys, it's just muffled. Mm-hmm. Give me your muffled voice. Mm-mm! Mm-mm! I'm gonna use my... mind... my dual link. Okay. And try to figure out what Mal is trying to tell us. Mal, what's going on? Uh... with the mind link... I don't know, just be careful. For anything, right? I don't... Uh, not that I know. But it's too easy. What was that? It's a truck! Oh. It's a truck! <laughs> yep. <laughs> this guy. It's too easy. Um, as Vishar does that, he kind of puts Mao to the ground. Jimmy, you like to say we're on the same side. You, you kicked me, you hit me, I hit you. That sounds you pretty, we're sound pretty, pretty you, even. You want, you want to prove that? Give me the goddamn plans. Take Mao. I want a blueprint. Here's a rock person. That's a fair trade. I don't know if it is a fair trade. The life of an individual versus, well, some blueprints? I don't... What's really going on? Why do you care? You run. That's what you do. I'm giving you an out. I'm letting you do exactly what you do best. Run away, Drinma. Run away. Give me the blueprint. And you get to do what you always done best ever since the war ended. 
you knew what the war was. You knew what the war had done to me. And don't act that like you're so innocent. Sorry. Every time. <laughs> but there's something else, isn't there? How dare you, Jirma? How dare you? We all lost something. We all suffered. Yet unlike you, I didn't run. I stayed home. I tried to rebuild. I took my loss and I, I became better. What'd you do? You took your father's ship and ran away. What have you done the last two years? Anything I wanted. Exactly. Anything you wanted. You're supposed to be our champion. And you ran. So don't give me this bullshit of... Oh... You knew what this war was. Don't, don't. The difference between you and me, Drinma, is I stayed. I rebuilt our home. You ran. Like a little child. So here you go. I'm giving you another out to run away again. All I ask is you give me the blueprints. Don't throw your bullshit at me, Drinma. You're right. You're right. Been nothing but a coward. Do you think you're welcome back here? <laughs> I don't think anything I do will make me a welcome... A war hero back to its home. That's just... It's not possible. Well, let me ask you this one question. Because for weeks, months, I didn't believe it. Do you know there's a rebellion going on back back home? A rebellion? There's a select group of people that are trying to uproot Lady Jayla and the Council of Cardinals. They want to put the Blood Regent back into power. They said the theo theocracy has blinded the church. No one listened to them until they said you were with them. They're right. And I, again, and giving you another out to run away. Something so silly, being seen as a hero just for fighting in something I believe in, not being told what to do. Does she still talk to you? Do you still dream of her? She does talk to me. You must be <laughs> maybe jealous. That was my my gift. How many years did we train together? How many years did we fight for the same cause and for her to choose you? And what have you done with that gift? What have you done with her blessing? With Tira's blessing? The flame's blessing? You've run. You've run. Yet she still talks to you. Do you know how infuriating that is? To receive a gift from the Kotol themselves, from Tira. And they still find you worthy after all the betrayal you've done. That must really, like, must really sting. Sting is one word, Drinma. But I found a new way to make myself worthy of her gift. 
of her embrace. And what is that? None of your goddamn business. Well, I think you're about to make it my business. See, you talk about betrayal and talk about the gift to me, but I've seen the change that's happened in you. I've seen what has been eaten at your soul. And here I just thought it was maybe jealousy, but now I'm not so sure. There's something more, isn't there? Just give me the blueprint, Jinma. We can go back to do what we both do best. I will protect our home, and you get to run away and do whatever you want. And put it that way, it sounds... awfully good. Give me Mal first. You know what? You know what? That's... Come here if I'm, I'm wrong. It, it, there was... There was three, right? There wasn't just one. There wasn't just Mal. Oh, yes, yes. I seem to recall there were two others. A you mean the Warforged, Warforged. and Merricks? Mm -hmm. Those two, yes. I've already sent them to Flamekeep. Lady Jayla and the Council of Cardinals have a lot of questions for them. They're not a part of bags, We have questions for them, too. Pity. Pity indeed. I asked Mal in her head, is that actually true? From what she knows, yes. Uh, Alistair. I heard that you had failed. What did you fail? Find the crystal. <clears throat> I don't know you to be a failure. Well, whoever stole the damn thing is really good at hiding their tracks. I failed so miserably, they hired some bounty hunter from Sean. And he failed. So did I really fail? No. Whoever stole this crystal... Why do they want- We can sit here and talk all we want, but you're just delaying the inevitable. You know you want Mal. You, this rock. Can we cut to the chase? Can we stop this catching up? Trying to figure each other out? I'm just afraid that at the end of this conversation one of us might not make it. One of us might not make it home. Give me the blueprints, I turn around and walk back into the keep I've been in charge of. Alice. I then take my ship and go to Flames Keep. Alistair, do you... Alistair, do you even know what you're asking? A, a humanoid life for a piece of paper? How is it that hard, Jernma? How many decisions did we make during the war? Where we had to choose actual life over life. I'm asking for a piece of paper. I'm just afraid what's on that paper might mean the deaths of many, many more. Or the salvation of all of Corvair. Well, when you put it like that, give it here. Give it to him. Oh, 
pull it out. Yep. Slowly start to walk up here to Drinma. I bump her shoulder as she's doing this. Telling her to look down and check her phone. Oh, okay. Hold on. I've had too much beer. Why do you check your phone? Yep. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Brian, you had to leave at the fucking worst time. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much tension. I can feel it in my nutsack. Which one, Drigma? <laughs> oh, I just saw the... Hold on, I saw the latest one. Honestly, the last one. Honestly, honestly. I know. Because you've you've seen them too, right? Well, I I've seen them through and through. Oh my dude, I fucking love this so much. Oh, I love this so much. Modern problems. <laughs> Great. All right, we're doing this. Yep, yep. Modern problems require modern solutions. Also, for now on, players, keep your phones handy. You about to pull a whoopsie on me? Whoopsie! <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right, so... All right. So... Jumping way forward after bumping into Drema. Blueprints there in hand. And. <clears throat> how far away is. Is Alistair? I, 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 I didn't get a good feeling for the whole. I uh, the whole setting. You guys. So. You're both. About 100 feet from your respective areas. 100 feet from the gate for Alistair, 100 feet from the ship. You personally are 25 feet away from each other. Because okay. he he's not getting that up close. Yeah. So I walk about halfway to Alistair. Hold another blueprint there in the palm of my hand. I'm holding him out there. There I got long. And I whisper the words, Fuego. You were saying the words, what? Fuego. 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 Fire. And I cast Prestidigitation to light the blueprints on fire, burning them all to <laughs> And I cast, um, I, well, I, I, after that's done, put my hands here above my head, and I cast Call from Above fire directly there at Alistair. Okay. Make four attack rolls. Fifteen. Does not hit. Eighteen didn't hit. Eighteen didn't hit. Remember, he had a high armor class the last time you fired him. Well, only one hit then, that was 24. That's what, that was only three. That was three. Uh, the second one there was a 12. No. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, 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 sorry, I, uh, the first one was a, uh, what, uh, was a 12, the second one was eight, third one was 12, and last one was 24. Yeah, 24 hits. Fuck. Well, that's good old four damage. Boom. Bam. Alrighty. So as you do that and it burns, he kind of like takes where he is holding Mal, pulls her in close, and then you hit him as you like rip apart the fabric of reality around you and shoot. Three shoot by his head and Mal's and then hit what the last one hits him in the shoulder, taking four points of damage. And with the rest of that, I kind of just scurry backwards. Um, also casting Hex on on uh, 
Yeah, because that's a bonus Alistair. action, isn't it? Yes. Is it hex on Alistair uh, for wisdom? Is it just yeah. Alistair that's there, by the way, too? Was there other people? It was just Alistair. Just Alistair. Okay. Okay. I need you all to roll initiative. Hey! Hey! Okay. Beer has an eight. God, color of that just is so goofy. Okay. And Captain Benatar is a 19. <laughs> plus eight initiative. Jesus fucking Christ. It's absurd. She has alert. She's just ridiculous. Rogues and they're alert, man. That feed is so going fucking good. Yeah, right? Alright, hold on. I gotta get this back up. Alright, I rolled 11 plus 2 for 13. Love it. It's time right. to duel. I get 18 tabs open. Close out your porn. I see, right? No. I'll watch it later. All right, so everyone, give me your initiatives, please. All right, Cap Benatar has a total of 19. Drin Vishar has 14. Drinma. Nine. Not uh, at advantage. At advantage, nine. Kavir. Uh, Kavir has an eight. <laughs> uh, Al, you said thirteen. Yeah, I got thirteen. Okay. Top of the round, Cat Benatar. She <clears throat> is going to use uh, one of her blank daggers. She's going to toss that over here in the direction of Alistair. Okay. Makes that attack at advantage. Yeah. Yep. Yes, because she's attacking first. Well, wait, yeah. you attacked Alistair, so... But I she didn't him, attack. But, he has not, but yes, yes, the Alistair has not attacked yet. Yes, so yes, at advantage. Ready. So, uh, I have a 22. And I have a 19 to hit. 22 will hit. 22 will hit. Cool, right. awesome. So, crit. Yep. Or, yes. It is. All right. <laughs> I so. love the smirk coming across coming across his face right now. He's like, okay, crit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So so far we have a total of twelve um, damage for the blink dagger plus her um, plus her sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is uh, is it two d six still? Yes. Or three d six? Ooh. Um, Hold on. It should be 2d6. It should be every other level that it becomes a... It's uh, it's uh, it's the odd levels. Okay. It's odd so levels. So at 5, it'll be 3d6. Okay, so so 24 points of damage here so far. Okay. So, yeah, we're at... Four yeah. Rest. So, okay. Then we have... Um... Sorry, math is going to be interesting on this. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Sixteen. Um. Twenty-four plus sixteen plus two D six. Here left here to roll. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Assassin, uh, assassin rogues. All right, so uh, that is forty-nine points of damage. Yep. The fucking blink dagger. <laughs> hey, you wanted to make sure that she got some. Yeah, yeah, Are dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck. Oh. Um. Wow. Uh, 
So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So, bonus, uh, uh, bonus, or blink dagger, that's bonus action, you'd be able to retrieve it, correct? No, you blink to it. You blink to it. Okay, yeah. so it's still there inside the body, then. Yeah. So, as, okay. as Cat Benatar, like, kind of appears out of the back from you guys and throws that blink dagger, it shoots by Mal and hits him in the left shoulder and just pierces straight through that plate armor. Does a lot of damage. And... You know what? Bonus action with the other blink dagger. Make an attack roll. All right, so first one is a 10. Mm -hmm. Come on, advantage. What do we got here? The suspense is killing me. So we have a 20 to hit. 20 just hits. Oof. Jesus Christ, his AC. Holy shit. I mean, this dude, I mean, he's he's Paladin he's a big deal. A silver flame. He's a big fucking deal. People know him. <laughs> Right, wow. so we have a total of eight so far, plus 12, five, so 13 plus 12 is 25. Yeah. Um, sneak attack only works one time. Yep. Yeah, because so, he, he knows she's there now. Yeah, so 25 damage uh, for the uh, second blink dagger. So 49 plus 25... That big numbers right there. That big it's numbers. 74. Yeah. 74 points of damage in one turn. We're going to keep that on track of that's the highest you guys have done. I'm, I'm right. You're right, right level four. Yep. So I'm going to write that down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. So as the first blink yeah. dagger goes into him and just cuts through the plate armor, Cat throws the second one and hits him in the other shoulder doing not as much damage, but still you can see he's kind of reeling from it. Alistair's looking hurt. Well, he fucking should be. Mm hmm Does that end your turn? Um, she would kind of move herself into be in a bit more position where she might be a little bit more covered. Okay. If that is, if that is possible. Yeah, quick thing. Drinma, I, I suppose you were in the front. Yes. And then Kabir kind of went up towards you and everyone but he also, else. He also, back, he also backed up, too, after he yeah. did his. Yeah. So I would, I would okay. say I'm still out in front, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> it's just so fucking crazy. And then she's just like, wow. Fucking assassins, dude. They're high, high AC, but man, he probably doesn't have a fuck ton of health. I mean, 74 damage is a fuck ton of damage. 78 damage, because you're four. That would, kill, that would kill probably most people. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal. Probably people most people. People know him. He's hurt. That ends your turn. That ends Cat Benadar's turn. It is now Alistair's turn. Alistair, still holding Mal, kind of throw, will use his action to throw her to the ground. And hell, Drinma. And with that, you see him raise his left arm and point towards your ship. He's then going to use all his movement to back up. So 30 feet. Okay. Uh, Drinma, what's your AC of your ship? It is 15. 
15. Okay, yep. so six cannons are going to fire on you. Okay. Well, on your ship. Okay. Uh, um, give me a second. Okay. This is so uh, cool I, that I can actually see everything. This is neat. Yeah, right? It's really in, in depth. D&D Beyond How everyone. How do you see all this? It's under uh, extras. He has it in his extras. Yeah. So it actually gives me like the actions, like the movement of the helm, oars, sails, ballista. Damn, that's cool. It's crazy in depth. Okay. So first, and remember, they're not they're they're can they're arcing cannons. Yeah. But they still have the same properties of range attack to hit. Okay. Yep, we'll keep it consistent like that. Alright, so first attack. Yo. Is twelve. Miss. Does not hit. I have to actually 13. write this down. That misses. Okay, this fucking dice is going in timeout. <laughs> uh, that's a nine. That misses. So that's three. Okay, that is a natural uh, 22 to hit. That'll hit. So that's one. 18 to hit. That'll hit. Yep. That's two. Uh, 23 to hit. Mm, miss. Of course that hits. Come on. All right, so three are going to hit your ship. Yep. I'll assume for the sake of simplicity, we'll just say that it's just the general hull of the ship. Yeah, Okay. but this is where the fun comes in, everyone. Okay. okay. So I need to roll 15d10 because it's 5d10 per cannon. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Makes sense. Yeah. Again, that makes sense. Like, that makes so sense. If you yeah, yeah. Your stats, yeah. 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 The man, man gun, uh, man gun L. Yeah, I, I see it. Those are your arcing cannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We changed those around, but I want to keep the same stats to make it easy for you. That's okay. Five d ten per hit. Yeah. So yeah, man gun L five d ten bludgeoning. Yep. All right. So for the first. Uh, Oh, and you can change your health. Yep, today. I can change it, so I've got it. I've got it up. Here, hey, Brian, why don't you just use just the dice roller? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So 15... I can do it right now. Yeah, 15 D10. Here, buddy, I got you. I got it. I was going to say, look at all these fucking dice. Yeah, right? So many. Okay. Your ship. Yeah. Takes 77 points of damage. Okay. Okay, now the fun part. Okay. I need to roll a d20. Okay. I'm not concerned okay. at all. Uh, how many people are on your ship? It's 40, right? 40. 40. Uh, I need to roll percentile dices. Okay. Dead. They're all dead. Dead. Yeah, I got D E D. Dead. D E D. Sixteen people on your ship are dead. Holy shit. You watch as three of the cannons shoot and one goes low. Two magical arcanes go high, and then three hit the left. Yeah, because your sh left side of the hall and explode that side of the ship. It's hard to see, but you can hear the screams, and some were caught in the explosion. So mark off 16 people off of your ship now. Yep. 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 I mean, you know, it's what, you know, like 160 less gold a day, so. Looking at the bright side. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank 32 you. 32 gold he doesn't have to worry about now. Oh, God. Jesus Christ in hell, dude. So Alistair used his full movement to back up, still looking quite hurt. 25, he used his 30. He's 55 feet away from all of you now. Um, encounter builder. Uh, Vishara, it is your turn. 
<laughs> and Adrian's here. Hey. You got um, into some shit. You got into the yeah, real. No, I've been trying to get back, like, transfer from my phone to my computer, but it's just saying, hold tight, loading Discord for, like, Yeah, ever. updates. All right, Vishara, what are you doing? Um... Guiding Bolt, this motherfucker. Make an attack roll. Second level. Second level, all right, make an attack roll. <sighs> you make it aggressive. 15, 15 does not hit. <sighs> all right, uh, said he was 55 feet away. He is 55 feet away. Alright. Here's a weapon. It is a 23 to hit. Remember, I manifest and make an attack. But what's the range? 60 feet. Okay, 23 hits. Hell yeah. We do yes. this every time with spiritual weapons. I literally hate spiritual weapons. It's, it's ridiculous. So it's so ridiculous. That is nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. All right. So, what does your spiritual weapon look like? A giant version of the Mace of Terror. Okay. The giant mace manifests right in front of him, clocks him upside the head. He's still hurt, but he's a little pissed now. And now he's hanging there. Okay. Uh, that is your turn, Al. It is your turn. I'm going to use Ray of Frost. That is a cantrip with 60 feet, 60 foot range. So you'd probably have to move up a little bit. You have to move up because he's 55 okay. from Drinma and you're okay. about five feet back. So he's 60. Okay, so oh, no, 60. Yeah, that's. Okay. Well, yeah. We're in the range. We're in the range. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead use my on-screen rollers Ten plus four for fourteen. Fourteen does not hit. Ugh. All right. Hi, guys, Paladins. I'm gonna use my bonus action to have my uh. Steel Defender, go up and attack him. I don't think you're still. Uh, his, his range is only 40, 40 feet. He can't 40 make feet, it. Yeah. So he, yeah. He'll, he'll. Okay. So he'll go up 40 feet to get closer. He'll go arf arf. Okay. Drinma, it is your turn. Mm, okay. Drinma would, uh. Whoa. Uh -oh. Drinma would like there to Drinma would like to rage. Okay. <laughs> and Finally, you're working. So she rages. She is going to take the dash action. Hey, quick, quick time out. What spiritual weapon? Is it a cantrip? No. No, then you can't cast. But it's a bonus action. Yeah. And what's what was guiding bolt? First. Yeah, you wouldn't be able yeah, to cast that. Oh, you yeah, you wouldn't be able to cast, cast that. You cast two spells. That's right. You can cast two as long as one's yeah, a cantrip. Yeah, second level below is a bonus action. As long as, as long as one is a cantrip, then you can. But you can't cast two level spells in the same turn, even if, even if one's a bonus action. Yeah. Magic's really hard in D&D. &D. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. confusing. Yeah, it's something that I actually had to go read up on, like or three different times for what it said there in the player handbook but that's the determination is right. that as long as you cast uh, one spell as either a cantrip um, then you can be able to make a second spell of a of either a cantrip again or a second level or, or, or first level or higher okay yeah so negate sorry guys this is why rules is written is rules is written so negate, negate, spiritual. negate spiritual weapon negate the nine damage Negate the nine damage. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's absolutely right. God, because again, her combo of fireball and spiritual weapon, I'm like, what the fuck? Hey. 
I just said let it do it. Yeah. But it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so negate so uh heal him nine, negate spiritual weapon. Okay, Jerma, you are raging as Jirma's, your bonus action. Jirma's what are you doing? Raging? She's gonna take the dash action to get right up in Alistair's grill. Uh, your movement speed is... 30. 30, so, so 60. 60. Yeah, you're right up in his face. As a free action, she's gonna say to Alistair... <sighs> just, just, just this rage. Alistair, you meant... You meant so much to me. I was hoping that you would get away from this with your life. But now I'm afraid I'm going to have to take it. That's all she'll say. Okay. That is your turn. Mm -hmm. Kavir, it is your turn. Yes, it is. All right. So... You know, let's have some fun. Um, I guess dissonant whisper. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, what's the saving throw? Um, it is wisdom at disadvantage, sir. Because oh, because you cast hex. Yes. Eight. Oh shit. Did not work. Wow. All right. So. Okay. Um, takes 21 points of psychic damage. And with Dissonant Whispers, it says, um, well, so as I RP it here, um, I kind of whisper a few, uh, uh, a few words and a few sounds that kind of carry um, through the distance and ears into his ears and it just racks him with just terrible pain. Um, okay. you fail the saving throw, he takes that much damage. Um, as a reaction, if he has it, if he has it all, as available, he has to move as far away, um, from me as his speed will allow. Um, he, he, he will not obviously move into dangerous ground, so it's like a fire or a pit. Yeah. So he has to use his reaction if it, if it is available to run away. Reaction 30 feet away. Drinma, you have attack of opportunity. Yeah, I'll take it. That's good shit. That's a good combo right there. That's an in excellent shit. Oh, yeah. That's not going to hit, unfortunately. That was a natural two. Oh, yeah, that doesn't hit. So as you... You hear Alistair start screaming in pain and holding his head. He turns around Not and runs away, and as he does that, you try to slash him in the back, and he's just, he's so distraught with that pain in his head, he runs too fast and you miss. Not the bees! Ah! And with my bonus action, I kind of just whisper, run, bitch. Vicious mockery. Vicious mockery. All right, Jesus. what are you doing? Uh, what's the saving throw? Wisdom again, also a disadvantage. That's a concentration. Eleven. Don't <laughs> shit. Eleven does not work. As he takes three points of damage. Ooh. And his next attack will be at disadvantage. Next. Okay. Alright, that is your turn. Top of the round. It's Cat Benatar's turn. The blink daggers are still in him. Yeah. Don't the blink so... daggers call, automatically come back? No, no you, you go to them. Her bonus action is just a blink to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does she have the opportunity on this round to blink to them? Yeah. Or Use her bonus action to blink to them. Yeah. All right. Tight. You will blink to them. Okay, so... He was 85 feet away. You guys watch his cat, Benatar, literally just... And then is right right on Alistair. Wow. Okay. He will grab the daggers back out of him, pull them out, 
Would that be a free action or an action to do? That is an action. If you're doing both daggers, that's an action. I okay. would allow a free action for one. Okay. That's not well, fair enough. I'm not going to have her just lose both of them. <laughs> I'll take both. Okay, so you're so bonus action, blink to them, action, take them out. Yes, take them both out. Okay. Hopefully he's kind of bleeding in the process here a little bit. And Oh yeah. He's a little bloody. Um Oh that's action and bonus action. He's way up fucking close. Remember, he has disadvantage. She can she, she can does. He will, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, he will actually, uh, like, backflip away. <laughs> kind of just like, like, like spring, you know, like on her hands. Backhand just spring. Just like, yeah, backhand spring. Just like, you know, away. pulls the daggers and as she does that, backhand springs away. Awesome. Yes. All right, so at disadvantage, he has no reaction because he used it. So it doesn't yes. matter. <sighs> yes, that's right. The fucking yes. man. Can you grab me a beer? Big brain. That was a big brain moment. Big brain moment. God because damn it. Because he used his reaction because of distant whispers, so it didn't matter. Okay. Uh, that's cat. Is that cat's turn? Yeah. That's all she can be able to do. Yes. Okay. That was incredible. It's Alistair's turn. Alistair, on a scale of 142, he's feeling like a 40. The fuck? A lot of damage, dude. You guys have been fucking him up. Like 20 fucking AC and you're- 40 health? Fucking shit. This is a strong dude, yeah. Um... Kavir, I need you to make a perception check. Right, mid battle perception check. What do we got? In all fairness, to Bryant's credit, you have someone that has great weapon master. You have an assassin rogue. <laughs> like sixteen. Good I gave, sixteen. I gave Peter a holy fuck homebrew. An awesome spell. homebrew spell. I, I can't. I can't blame you for maybe beefing up the HP just a little bit. I mean, He's like, also a level 10 paladin. Yeah, that's also true. Don't tell us all this shit. Well, because it's about to change, motherfuckers. You know the script? We're about to flip it. You said 16. Yes, sir. Alistair Willow, bleeding, very hurt, reaches into his pocket, holds up a green crystal, with yellow veins and a pulsating yellow light. Let's have some fun then, Drinma. And you watch as she shoves it into his heart. As he does that, you watch as the crystal melts and fuses with him. I need you all to re-roll initiative. Okay. Kavir kind of looks back at everyone and says, I think I might have made a mistake. I think we all made a mistake. <laughs> you now face Alistair the champion. Okay. Okay, hold on. I, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Vishara. 19. 19. Kavir. All right, so Kavir has a 16 total. 16. Uh, Cat Benatar. Cat Benatar, once it freshes, has a 
21. Fucking bullshit. Uh, you're not. <laughs> I know. As poetic as it is, you can't make this up. Drimma rolled a natural 20. 20. <laughs> what's the total? I need the total. 22. For 22. Okay, yep. so again, you have advantage on your first attack roll. Al, what'd you roll? I rolled a six plus two for eight. Eight. Okay. Alistair the champion. Alistair the champion. Drinma. Yeah. Athira. Yes. You're up first. Hey, Drinma. Will, is she still raging? Do we can we yeah, say that? Okay. Still, technically, still raging. Okay. Because. So how this works is you have to take you have to do an attack roll or take damage. Yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah. To yeah. the start of your next turn. Yep. The reason why I rerolled initiative is because you guys are fighting a new enemy. Okay. So your your turn hasn't happened. Okay. You're still raging. Fair you enough. Have to attack or take damage this turn. Or not going to be an not going to be an issue. You did attack as part of your reaction. Oh, you did because yeah. Okay, I would I, so regardless. I would still have to make it. Yep. Also, motherfucker, you have inspiration. If you don't use it, I am taking it away. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, how far is he away? Thirty feet. Thirty feet. Drimma is raging. She's going up. Great weapon master on this mofo at advantage. Come on, baby. Are Come you on. using inspiration? Oh. Well, I'm already at advantage. Can I take double advantage? Well, can oh, I yeah. use double advantage? Oh, bummer. Well, oh, yeah, natural 20. Good. Sorry. I just said natural 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you recklessly attack, I mean, would you be able to use uh, um, your inspiration at the end of that if you didn't get what you wanted? Okay. I would allow that. Okay, uh, fair enough. I'll. I I didn't call. Some I, inspiration I, is meant to like, hey, come on, I really want this. Sure. Uh, I didn't call it, so that's fine. Okay, twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one hits. Twenty-one hits. Awesome. So that's gonna be at ten. <laughs> oh, bless you! Oh my goodness. Uh. Oh boy, yeah, that's good. Um, so we're already at 10, right? So 10. So 10. 19. 22. Also Divine Fury. 27. You uh, need to double that. What's that? Divine Fury is radiant. You need to double it. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Not a crit double, but crit. whatever yep. you roll, double it. 24. Okay, 34 points of damage. Okay. Nice. Uh, to the people watching, this is a homebrew monster, so you'll uh, just buckle up. Can you tell me what he looks like after I just like cleave into this mofo? So as I would love to, as he takes this shard that you will have all seen now and shoves it into his heart, this shard... Cover, coats him in a green and yellow body armor. He is no longer human. He is a vestige of green and yellow light. That's a good word. He's Hulk. Tell me your damage one more time. Uh, it was 34. 34. Does he grow at all in size? Does he grow anything like incorporeal? Still normal size. He is the same size as Drinma, but he did not. He did not double in size. He is still a medium creature. Is he still wearing, wearing yeah. his plate armor and everything too? Just it's just now green and yellow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So it's still a twenty to hit. Okay. All right, and I end my turn. Thirty-four damage. Yeah. All right. Cat Benatar. That's pretty satisfying. You're up. Question. Potential new answer. Initiative. It's yeah, a new initiative. This is a this is advantage and sneak attack and crit. Yeah. That's it. Deal some damage, <laughs> motherfucker. He's like, right. give me some of that. All right, we're doing it. 
Okay, well, good thing that it's all here at advantage. First one here was a natural one. Mm, get Ouch. it out. Of, get it out of here. Yep. Uh, second one is a natural 18 plus 6 for a 24. 24 will hit. That's a crit. Do some damage. Okay, so we're already at 24 damage. <laughs> and this thing wants to clear. Not freeze up on me. All right, give me a second. Man, oh man. Ooh, Guys, D&D &D Beyond. D&D Beyond, man. I tell you, thank God for thank God for D and D Beyond because I can create my homebrew monsters and plug them into Encounter Builder and not have to keep track of thirteen different things. Yeah, it is really nice that everything's just kind of laid out right here. And it's like I said, it's pretty cool actually on the desktop version. Just clicking on, you know, whatever, and it gives you the roll. That's pretty neat. And adds everything. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. That's yeah, neat. I added the roll into mine this week too. That's awesome. Very neat. All right, so we have 24 plus five plus three plus eight, so that's 16. So we have uh, 40 damage <laughs> Jeez. for one attack. Okay, real quick. Yes, sir. Sneak attack can only be used once. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yes, so the next so one is just a crit. I mean, so when we use the sneak attack um, on the assassinate, it's for critical hit damage, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that I'm doing this here correctly. So, um, yeah, because it. So, our blink daggers are a total of D4 plus 4. Yes. Plus <laughs> 2D6. Of force. So, of force damage, yeah, or, 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 or for sneak attack. So, yeah. so, so, so when we max all those out. That equals a total of 24 damage here so far. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I, just the second attack, you lose sneak attack because you're. they know you're there. I didn't do a second attack here yet. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, the second attack, don't add the sneak attack. I'm aware. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. You can just uh, scan was, uh, once a turn. So we're at 24 first, and then you then add all, 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 all the all damage the on there. Here for the attack here. And that's, that's our homebrew rules. Yes. And now it's second attack. Cool. Yes. Which is, which is exactly how I did it there, there, there uh, for the first time. Yeah. It just gets kind of so wild when it's like... <laughs> it's all these like, fucking dogs. <laughs> Again, I love... Everyone watching this, I love being a DM, but there, like, there's sometimes where it's like, uh, in this moment, it's like, oh, shit, are we adding everything right? You're like, boy, that's a lot of damage. And you're like, mm. Trust me, I, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to try and be able to add everything up here correctly. No, yeah. I know yeah. you are. And I trust all of you. It's just like, I have to, like... I have to. It was to me. Stuff. It was to me like, and I rolled really good on like everything right there, and I was like, "Shit." You're gonna hate me though. <laughs> Natural twenty. Oh. Oh my god. You're gonna hate me. Hey, Do it, it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. No, where's, this is a. Where's, this is a big battle. Like again. I'm not gonna hate you guys if the dice are in your favor. Yeah. She does not. Now she does not uh, get. Uh, she does not get the plus four. Uh, no. Because right. uh, you can't be able to add her modifier to the damage. Right. But where's where's the? So comes out to a six plus the max out dice is gonna equal out to eight. Uh, yes, eighteen. Eighteen. Yes, it was six, and then not here on the screen. That dice of twelve, so. 18 damage, good sir. I feel like this so, is like the part where the... damage. This is the part where the guys have the funeral, the casket on their shoulders, and they're doing they're the... They're dancing. They're dancing. Yeah. That's what's... <laughs> Anything else Cat Banatar wants to do? Um, that will be all here for the moment. As she is kind of just throwing both daggers as, an, as, as her action, bonus action, she's not going to move. And that's going to be it for her, for her round. Vishara. It is your turn. I'd like to toll the deed. Is how far away from me? Like 80 feet? Um, yes, uh, he was 55. And he was 55. He did. He had to use his reaction to go. So he's 85 five. feet.
Will you motherfucker? I love that so much. <laughs> That's the I'm best thing. Up to be within 60 feet of him. So 55 feet because your moon so speed's funny. 30. All right. To use sacred flame. Sacred flame. Do it. Saving throw. Burn this bitch down. Is he very dexterous? That's a 14 exactly. Damn it! Damn. Natural 11 plus 3. Now you can do spiritual weapon. Now I'm doing a spiritual weapon. Hey! Yes. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. And that's an 8. So as you <laughs> throw the spiritual up. flame and he Not just kind up. of like, he does that Neo Matrix style dodge. He doesn't really move, he just leans to the side. You conjure your spiritual weapon that looks like the mace you currently wield, and you swing down, and he can, from stepping to this side, just kind of sidesteps that. It's like JoJo's. Uh, and just like... It is still hanging there. Um, that's your movement, that's your action, that's your bonus action, and everything. It is Alistair's turn. He is going to use his... His ability. I need everyone that's within 30 feet of him. It's definitely me. Not me. So only Drinma. Mm -hmm. He is going to use his ability Dark Sword Vortex. Actually, this is an attack roll. This is not a saving throw. Okay. This is All right, fair enough. Great attack roll. You tell you tell me, man. Yeah, sorry. I, again, this is a homebrew monster. I'm sorry, guys. This is kind of my... Like an anime character. That is a 15 to hit. That will hit. That will hit. Okay. Hey, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You take 16 points of slashing damage. Reduced to half. Yep. So eight. Yep. And with you, you take with you there so far. One point of force damage. Cool. Uh, so you guys watch as Alistair kind of just like holds his hands at his side, and a bunch of dark, vaporeal blades start to whirlwind around him in a thirty feet area, and slash across Drenma. That's his action. Do they do they still stay up? That yeah. E. Bonus wait. action. Wait, wait, wait. Disadvantage. This is his first attack. He would have made at disadvantage. This is not an attack. This is an ability. You said it was an attack. I have to. Probably it's an ability, but I have to make an attack roll instead of a saving throw. It's does this ability hit you? Would the attack roll not be a disadvantage? Because it's an ability? Um, you know what? Let me double check the rules. Here, I have a pulled up here. I can just read it off here, too. Um, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the uh, before the end of its next turn. If you can... I... It... Yeah... I mean, granted, my AC is only 15, too, so if you feel you need to make another I mean, one... Yeah, like... If you okay, need to make yeah, another yeah. one, go ahead. That's fine. No, wait, for... wait, wait, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It says, uh, before the end of its next turn. Oh, so because it's a new monster, it would now... Gets the, be, no, 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 not really that, but because he already used his other turn to try and be able to change himself, then it reset everything, so, so, so this whole thing is all negated then. Okay, okay. all right, okay, okay. that's fine. Yeah, no, no, no. Again, but rules is written. But it, so, sorry, everyone, but yeah. So, he's good. Yeah, okay. Yes. We're good. We're Gucci. Okay. So, he doesn't have a bonus action to use. For his free action, he's going to literally scream out, destroy them. It is now the base's turn. He has some layer actions. 
Doesn't mm -hmm. our ship get a turn then? If the base gets a turn? The base is connected to Alistair. Yeah. <laughs> Probably about to go up. Yeah. All right, Drinma. Yo. Six arcane cannons. Okay. All right, and it was a plus. F Sorry, I gotta pull up the stats real quick. Sorry. Stop. If the base is connected to Alistair, right, uh, what is it? Uh, I misses. I don't know. Misses. 19 will hit. Okay, so we're at 1. 21 will hit. Yep, that's 2. That's 2. That was 4 rolls, so 2 more. 19 and a 23. Okay, so 4 will hit. So 4 will hit. Bye, Drama. So that's 20. D10. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much worried about the ship. I'm worried about the people that are on that ship. Oh God! Your ship takes 110 points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I need to roll twice now. Oof! Wow. Ouchies. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. We can rebuild her. She can be faster and stronger. You lose 32. You've just... So your entire crew is now dead. Everyone but Alrin is alive. You mean dead? Everyone but Alrin is dead. <laughs> Alrin's controlling the ship. Lefty, no! <laughs> Lupin, no! Barnaby! Holy shit. And that work book we pick up. Hold on. We can rebuild them. No, we can pick I up think. Work. Does that work like that? I don't know. Jorlin's still good. He maintained concentration. <laughs> have a silver dragon come exploding out of your ship. So you have two people left on your ship. Okay. Okay. Jorlin. And all renders okay for the time being. We really use Thank God for that plot armor. Yeah. <laughs> what is your Thank God ship's for health? that plot armor? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what is your ship's health at? Don't worry about it. It's 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 okay. It's good. It's, it's good. It's good. We're good. Hey, okay. whatever, whatever happens, happens, man. Severe. It's your turn. How far away would I be from? 30 feet. Everyone, 30 feet. Oh, are, you said everyone or Alistair? Oh, really Alistair. 30 feet. Because you moved up to get in range and then he had to use his reaction. So you're about 30, 35 feet away from him. Is there a way to contact the ship? There's only two people left alive on it, man. You can if probably you holler your, to see if you have your mind's eye and you can talk to Jorlin. Wait, do I have a sending stone that goes there to Jorlin? Poof. I have no idea. Oh. Yes, I you do. So. You have a sending stone to Kavir, a sending stone to Jorlin, and a sending stone, or no, you're Kavir, Corvin, and Merricks. You have three sending stones. I pull up a sending stone and I try to be able to contact Jorlin and I say, tell them to fire all the fucking cannons. And I'm going to run forward just so I'm just within 60 feet of um, of Alistair, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, say I'm gonna yell out here to him. You're really fucking in for it now, bitch. 
there's just mockery. <laughs> yeah. Wisdom saving throw? Yep. Yes, sir. Still at disadvantage, because still concentrating. Natural one. He takes two points of psychic damage. Two points, all right. I just run at a disadvantage. Okay. Is that your turn? Yes. I'll stay here. You should have done that. <laughs> Ow. All right. Turn. How far away am I from him now? You didn't move. Right. So still the same range. Okay. But your dog, who you've yet to name, your steel defender, <laughs> is 40 feet. Okay. So if I move up, use my movement to move 30 feet, would that put me within 30 feet? Or. No, that would put you at 50. 50. Okay. So I'm going to move up my 30 feet to do 50. And then have my steel defender move up. Sorry, my phone is going really slow right now. Oh, you're fine. It's all these people playing D&D &D Beyond. Steel defender is at 40 feet right now? 45. 40 feet. 40 feet. All right. I'm going to have my steel defender go up and attack. Uh, make an attack roll. Durr. Uh, rolled an 18. Does he get in any modifiers on those? It's a plus four. Okay. So 22. So 22. 22 will hit. Awesome. That's 1d8 plus two force damage. I can't wait until we fight against normal armor class character or normal armor armor class enemies. You've been fighting normal armor class characters. We we like have. We have. You're in all fairness, you're right. Roll the seven. So nine damage. <laughs> Is there anything that you can do? Mm, not. Do you have any? Um, do you have any range stuff okay, that can so meet up this, the difference? Uh, from sorry, I use a bonus action. So from this distance, I'm going to use my blunderbuss because I'm now 50 feet away, and that's a range of 60. It's at disadvantage. Yeah, it would, it's, it's a 15 60 eighth. So anything beyond 60 feet is disadvantage. Or I thought just... I was 50 feet away. Sorry. <laughs> anything be... You get 15. And then... There's a slash. There's a slash. 60. Yeah. So the range, yeah. Is, the range is within 60, but that, that 60 would have to be at disadvantage. I forget how I do that. Isn't, isn't that right? I, I, 15, 15 slash 60. Anything beyond... 15's at disadvantage, Anything beyond right? uh, 15 will be at disadvantage. It's yes. Within 60. Anything beyond 60 feet will not. Uh, okay. It's not going to be effective at all. Yeah, so it, it is a disadvantage attack. Do you have any abilities or anything that could be effective at that distance? Um... Like your aberrant mark, is, it, is there anything that you could do that would... Uh, Jack and... Puppy. Ah, doggo's sleeping. Doggo's sleeping. She's so cute. Not seeing anything. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you fire your blunderbuss, it's at disadvantage. Okay. 
Mm, let's see here. Uh, yeah, because you can't use your breath weapon you're too far. Yeah, I can only do that fifteen. You have a lot of good. You have a lot of good stuff that's like non-combat, but yeah, during combat, it's like it's kind of tough. Right. Yeah, you can't infuse anything. Yeah. It looks like Ray of Frost would be a, a good option. Yeah, yeah or, because or your you're blunderbuss at disadvantage. So I just, just try to be able to run up closer and blast them. Well, she used her movement. Okay, so, never mind. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say your blunderbuss or your Ray of Frost that would be your best bet. Dodge okay. action is always good, too. What's that? <laughs> Dodge action is always pretty good. Dodge too. is always good, too. But I was already trying to do my blunderbuss, which is probably not going to hit because I already hit it. I did it. already got an eight. Yeah. So it's no. probably not going to hit. The second one was a three. Yeah. No, mm. that don't hit. So you take your blunderbuss and try to shoot at him. Ooh, wait. A natural three? Yes. Okay, you're good. Your misfire score is two. You're fine. Okay. You're pretty close, though. Uh, you shoot your blunderbuss, and the bullet just kind of, like, sh flies to him, but then kind of dips off. Although it was weird that it, it, it had an error on the roller on my screen, because the dice that was on my screen said three, but when it popped up, it said 19. But it was oh. a disadvantage anyway, and I'd already done an eight. Oh, but Ouchies. All right, so that ends your turn because you moved your, you use your movement, your action, your bonus action for field defender Drinma. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. You are still raging. He's still raging. So, here's what we're gonna do. Ready? As an action. You use your inspiration, right? I'm going to. Okay. Uh, first things first. Uh, oh fuck, maybe. Ah, fuck it. Let's do this. This will be more fun anyways. Uh, Radiant Consumption. So, Drinma just starts to, in, in agony, scream out loud and a giant vibrant of, uh, of radiant energy kind of pulses from her uh, in a ten-foot radius. And then, um, as a bonus action, can you punch? Like an unarmed strike? Uh... I have two weapon fighting, but I don't know if that Nah, that's an action, buddy. Yeah. I wish sure you would not be able to because, I mean, I know that monks get the opportunity to be Yeah, no, you're not a monk, so no. I could be if I really wanted to. Um, Ooh, a barbarian monk. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Uh, anyways, uh, so, yeah, she is going to just, uh, as a free action, you know, look at, look at uh, Alistair and be like, look what you have become. Disgusts me. Uh, so, with that radiant consumption right there, let me take a little clicker right here. Uh, he takes uh, four points of radiant damage, which is Double it. doubled. So he takes eight points of radiant damage, and okay. then I take two. Oh, you take two? Mm hmm. Okay. Is that your turn? Yes, sir. Cat Benatar. Cat Benatar is going to be able to blink her way, trying to be able to retrieve the daggers here again. So you're right up in him. Right. He is going to use her action to retrieve the daggers here one more time. Pew. Both of them are embedded inside of it. This bastard. Carol Got Baskins, motherfucker. <laughs> Carol Baskins. And you know what? Let's just repeat the same thing. He's gonna just backhand spring away from this thing. He does have a reaction at disadvantage. Yes. Yep. Because he is heck, or you did him with vicious mockery. Mm hmm. Nine to hit. 
That will not hit her. Nice. So she backsprings away. He kind of, you watch as like a black blade forms on his hand. He swings, misses. As she is just back handspringing away, just barely kind of like goes like right across her slow-mo <laughs> and moving away just real quick. All 30 feet? All 30. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to do for Cat Benatar? Can't really do anything else. Okay. Vishara, it is your turn. He hasn't moved, correct? He has not moved. Cool. I'm going to swing down the spiritual weapon as my bonus action. Okay. Uh, make an attack roll. <laughs> That's an eight again. I don't, don't hit. Um, Let's use Sacred Flame again. Okay, make an attack roll. Or it's a dex yeah. for him. Yep. Do you have anything wisdom related? No. No. We need to get on that. Man. It's all wisdom. Dead. Fine. Can't beat a 14. No, he fails. Sacred Flame hits the bastard. And it's radiant. Four, eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. All right. It's is and that's it was, radiant. Is it, it radiant? Is or radiant. Is it so another so sixteen, 16 points of damage. damage. Boom! Bam. All right. Is Alistair's turn? He has to roll to see if he gets his black. Swords. Yeah, black swords back. He does not. Ooh. Druma, you're right up in him, right? Damn right. He is going to multi-attack you. Bring it, bitch. Uh... All right. So as you stand before him, those black blades he conjured mm -hmm. come back, and he's going to slash both of them across at you. Bring at it. Not disadvantage, because I already used it. Mm-hmm. You have a 13 to hit and a 16 to hit. 16 will hit. 16 will hit. Mm -hmm. All right. You take five points of necrotic damage, reduced to half two. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. As a bonus action. Nah, nah, he's not going to use that yet. Uh, wait, for wait, wait, wait would, he, would, he, would he get bonus actions with multi-attack? Yeah, you can get bonus actions with multi-attack. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not like, it's not multi-attack. It's he's using an action to attack twice. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, he's not going to use that bonus action yet, but free action. He's going to scream, destroy that ship. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. How are those cannons coming along there, Kavir? How are the cannons coming along? I didn't get a response. <laughs> so one hits. Okay. I rolled four dice. Okay. One of them will hit bad, because it's 21. Bad Everything percent. else is a 9, 10, and 13. Yeah. Yeah. So one will hit. Yeah. Two more. Both will hit. Okay. 19 and a 18. Okay. Yep. Those will hit. <laughs> this is getting this is getting wild. So three will hit. Okay. Right. Yep. Roll them bones. Roll them bones. I think your ship's about to just. So that's fifteen. We'll find out. 
Your screen probably looks ridiculous with all those things. Yeah. Your ship takes 68 points of damage. Can you make it to 69? I'm kidding. 68's plenty. That's good. Yeah, 68's fine. I'm not gonna tempt fate. Had to roll a percentile dice to see if Jorlin and Alrin survive. And? 86. They both survive. Okay. Okay. Jorlin has to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, dear. But he's proficient in it okay. with his plus, you know, ancient dragon. He's good. Okay. Okay. He's up up top, right? Like, he's not gonna just- he's not, like, sitting in the hole, is he? No, he-, he you've only got two people left on your ship, and it's Jorlin and Al Alrin. Okay. Okie dokie. I don't know what your ship's health at, but I'm uh, going to assume- it's half the fun. It's fucked up. It's- it's- it's getting pretty gnarly, yeah. I hope you have insurance. <laughs> Maybe Jake from end of Jake from State Farm. Alistair's turn. Kavir, it is your turn. Good neighbor, State Farm is there. <laughs> now kill him, Jake. <laughs> I swear use those. If I ever get, use um, those slacks. Uh, if, if, if I ever get uh, the ritual for unseen servant, definitely <laughs> want to say every single time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first dungeon you guys get into, you may find it. Fuck, we haven't even done a dungeon yet. Yeah, it's true. We haven't even done a good dungeon crawler. What Man. are you doing, Kavir? I'm really hoping that, uh, well, actually, wait, so, was I able to see if Jorlin had at least seen the message? It has been received, but there's only two people on this ship. Well, there is I mean, one cannon being prepared. Know that, so. he, much they he would do. just know if it's just been received. It's been received. Okay, then that's all Kavir needs to know right for right now. And he will clasp his hands here above his head, rip that portal in time here again, time to space open up, stars begin to fall here from the sky Pew. as... Pew, 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 stars pew, pew. held down on Alistair. Okay, make your attack rolls. Attack rolls. First one is a 12. Yes. Second one is a 22. Hey. 22 a hit. That's one. All right, there's one. Number two, uh, number three is a 13. Miss. And number four is a 25. Hey. 25 will hit. You got two attacks that hit. All right, so means I got 2d4s for radiant damage. Got a 3 and a 4, so 7. So, if it's radiant, that would make that 14, yes? Yes, it does. 14 damage. And I'm going to yell back at him, you really shouldn't have done all this. It's just mockery. Hope you shouldn't have done it. You done goofed. Uh, oh, wait, 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 saving wait, throw wait. it. Wait, hold on. I should have been making all these attacks here with hex damage on top of all of them. So make three with hex damage. No, make because hex never left and you've never been hit, so you never lost concentration. Make five. Put five hex damage on. Yeah, five d six. 5v6, we got 18. 18! Nice. Solid, man. <laughs> Half the beautiful beauty of Hex right there. Wait, right? it's is it normal damage necrotic. or necrotic? Necrotic. Okay. So it's probably halved. Okay. Is that your turn? Have him make a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. Wisdom saving throw at disadvantage because of vicious mockery. Didn't do it. Yeah. Ooh. He nice man. D4. Andy, you can also take another hex damage here too. 
Do it. So it's two plus four, so a total of six. The four would have been from uh, uh, from the, from Hex. So if that's necrotic, yeah. Is is he resistant to necrotic? I just want to make sure. Uh, otherwise, I just won't say anything. He is resistant to necrotic. Okay, in that case, then I can go ahead and just start having everything forward negative. Yep. Thank you. Yep. That is your turn. That is. Yes. Yes, that is my turn. Ow! It is your turn. All right. Keep so on moving up. Moved. Nope. Move nope. on up. All right. So I'm going to pull out. Let's see. I'm going to move up so that I'm 30 feet away from him. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use my decanter of endless and say geyser. So I'm going to produce 30 gallons of water. The guy's 30 feet long and one foot wide. And as a bonus action, I can aim it um, at a creature. A target must save on a DC 13 strength saving throw or take 1d4 bludgeoning damage and fall prone. Okay. So, uh, what's the what's the DC and what type of saving throw? Strength, and I think 14? DC, thir- thir- DC 13. 13 for strength. Yep. Nineteen. Oof. It's probably but pretty- he's still covered in water. He is still covered in water. I'm wet. Curious to see what a combo move this would be. Right. Wombo combo. Is your steel defender gonna do anything? Um, I already used my bonus action to aim the decanter, so or can I still use uh, command my defender? Uh, no, use your bonus action. You have to use your bonus action to move steel defender or control yeah. him. Yeah. So I already used my, de- my I already used my action and my bonus. And so that would end my turn. Okay, Jurnma, it is your turn. You have one cannon. <laughs> um, that is a free action to use. Let's say as a free action and just go on. If anyone's up there, fucking let her rip. Where? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I, assu- I assume at their cannons. That would probably make the most sense. Make an attack roll, please. Yes. And then 18. 18 against their cannon. That will hit. Oh, cool. All right. And we're saying this is the... uh, 5d10. Yep, at 5d10. Awesome, 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 awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, 23 points of bludgeoning damage. 23 points. All right. Um, so the far cannon on... Well, as you guys look at the the, the keep, mm-hmm. the far one on the left takes some damage, still operational, but it won't fire the next turn. Okay. They have to realign it, fix it, but it's it, it can still fire. Okie dokie. That is your free action. Action, okay. bonus action, and movement. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm right on him. Yeah. Uh, so I am going to attack Reckless with my greatsword. Okay. Okay. Um, can I use inspiration on this too? If need be? I... Yes. Okay. So I can just roll So another... triple advantage. Okay. Okay. Damn, none of them were natural 20s. It was close, but not a natural 20. Uh, is that is twenty on the dot? Twenty will hit. Twenty will hit. Oh, All right, and then that's gonna be my sixes. Right over here. Eleven. Uh, fourteen. Sixteen. 
18, uh, 22 points of damage. Does that include your radiant? Uh, so, if, yeah, oh, sorry, because I gotta add that. So it's 26 points of damage. Did you double the radiant, though? Yes. Yes, yeah, 26. So 26. Yes. And then he takes another eight points of radiant damage for my radiant consumption. Is that doubled? Yes. So that's 34 in total. He's looking hurt. And I take. You're seeing that like shadow and dark and green energy that surround him starting to fade away. As his fades away, Drenma's light grows brighter too, and just this loud scream of kind of agony. It's almost like the light is burning her. Okay. And I end my turn. Cat Benatar. Do your worst, Kaiba. It's your turn. Ah, uh, yes, it is. It is. Well. <laughs> well. Well, well, well. Let's see then. Um, <laughs> he's still within 30 feet, yes? Yeah. Hasn't moved. He's just taking it. Just taking it. She's gonna... But she's gonna run up there. He's her full 30 feet. And attempt to flank him. Since he seems to be kind of on one with one on one combat with Drema. Okay. Would that work? That would work. Hell nice. yeah, man. Hello, Blink Daggers. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you see Jacob uh, from Bro Job? What he tweeted? Yeah. Taste yeah. your own cum. Grow the fuck up. <laughs> and, then the, and then the guy comments anyone who says they haven't is lying you gotta be curious <laughs> Jesus Christ what we got there Cat Benatar alright make sure I roll twice cause with advantage I have a 19 and a to hit 19 and what? a 19 and an 18 to hit don't hit damn this guy's it's beefy He's a beefcake. He's a part of beef, right? Um, beefcake! Damn. I know. Okay, um, she's gonna use her cutting action. Um. None of those would really be helpful. Um, <laughs> no, fuck. We'll see what happens. Second blink dagger. <laughs> As a bonus action. Go, home. go yes. big or go home. All right. So we have a twenty-one. Twenty-one. And a sixteen. Twenty-one hits. <laughs> Low sneak attack. Nice to see you again. <laughs> so we're at twenty four fourteen is twenty eight. Oh, I'm sorry, is a uh, thirty eight damage, and there's no other modifiers that are involved with that. Okay. Here's the 14. Okay. It's starting to look really hurt. Oh. It's gotta be on his last legs. Come on. Is that the end of Cat Banatar's turn? She cannot move. She's taking action and action and bonus action. Okay. Vishara. It is your turn. Send this. Send this to the fucking Shadow Realm. Point. I get advantage on hitting with the spiritual weapon. You do. Send him to the shadow realm. Twelve. Spiritual weapon does not hit. Wow. That's by far the worst you've ever rolled for a spiritual weapon. Usually your Seriously, money your money with it. 
spit on it. Yeah, your money with it. Aurora Bailey. That's your bonus action. Action. Would I get advantage on a guiding bolt? He has disadvantage from the. Is guiding bolt an attack roll or a? Yeah. It's a spell attack. That's a great that's, question. Yeah, because I, he is flanked, but wh where you're standing, no. You're still in the middle. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know if spells. I don't know there about spells. We're probably going to have to be able to do some research on this. Yeah. I would say just make a call right now, and then we'll have to research it. Do it. Do it at advantage. At do advantage. It. All right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because, it, like, if she's that far away and he is focused on Drinma, why why wouldn't she get it? Okay, first hit was a 24. 24 will okay. hit. There you go. 24 will hit. Get you some. God dang, bold. Is that radiant damage? That yeah. is. Fuck radiant. yeah, it is. God damn. Do your. Do your... 34 points of radiant damage. <laughs> Did I just kill him? No. Ah! Shut oh, up. Thirty-five HP. So you throw your guiding bolt at him. It hits him. The armor is almost dissolved away. He is. You. You can see through this armor that he is bleeding. He is hurt, and he is super weak. God damn it, it couldn't have been an 18. He's sure cocking it too now. But yeah, he's sure co he's sure cocking it hard. <laughs> and it's his turn. And that's oh, your that is your turn. Fuck. Fuck. Because okay. Your ship is about to get annihilated. <laughs> so as you throw your guiding bolts and you hit him and you got you guys all watch as this armor, this black, green, yellow armor starts to dissolve around him. He is Almost leaning down. And as he's about to... Tr um, I need to roll to see if he gets it back. Does. Okay. But as he's about to cast his ability, you see as a large sphere... Think um, Doctor Strange, but instead of orange, it's blue. A half-elven male, who looks to be about in his 20s, walks through. That's enough, Kavir. We would treat. And as he says that, Kavir kind of uses his free action. You mean Alistair? Or Alistair uses his... Yeah. <laughs> I, I look at Peter and I said Kavir, I'm sorry. Alistair looks at him, we're not done yet. We're done. They beat you. Head into the gate. As he says that, you see Alistair take his movement... Drinma, make your attack of opportunity. Oh dear God, please hit. Oh my God. Tattoo. What's that? Yeah, Benatar too. Oh wait, and you have advantage. Oh, cause. You have advantage. Only one gets advantage. Uh. Because it's the next person that attacks. Yeah. Okay. Both of these. Next I you make the call, man. I'm okay with the rolling advantage if that means you just want to do a straight Good roll. Point. He's flanked and the radiant damage. You don't get triple advantage. You don't stack advantage just like you don't stack disadvantage. Make the call. Okay. So Pete, you doing a straight roll, I'll roll with advantage? Is that what we're doing? That's fine. Okay, all right. Oh! oh. 23 hits. Uh, 24. 
24 hits. I think Alistair's about to die. The killing blow is yours. It's whose? Both of ours? At the same time. (gasps) Okay. You get to decide. I mean, uh, technically, Jurma has a lot of history with Alistair. I hear but the, here's what Cat's gonna do then. Cat's gonna leap up, and she is going to pounce on his back and jam uh, um, um, one of the blink daggers into the shoulder and kind of just pull him over and kind of just kind of kind of just creating like a perfect shot right there, chest wise. And then I'm gonna okay. And then so she does she does that. I want to say Alistair fell, falls to his knees right there. Drinma takes her great sword, grabs him, gives him a kiss, and plunges it straight through his chest. As you do that, this half elven figure watches all of it, still standing by the gate he created. Well done. I'll see you all soon. And begins to turn and walk away towards the gate. And as right before he walks through the gate, he turns back around. Not fully turn around, but like kind of leaning his head over his shoulder. My apologies. My name is Kyle. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. And that's where we get to this episode. I couldn't say it with a straight face. <laughs> that is absurd. That is so absurd. <laughs> He's gone. He's just gone. You're a fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> Just when I thought you couldn't get any lower, you pull this shit. And Six feet under, motherfucker. And just when I thought you couldn't get any dumber, you go and do this and totally redeem yourself. <laughs> so, um. So, for Adrian, people who are I was really going do you guys know? Like, yeah, do you know what we're talking about? So for people confused as why Peter literally just got really pissed and walked off screen. The first campaign we ever did at the very end of the campaign, Peter and Hannah, their characters had a child and they named it Kyle. I think it was like a one sided like this is what we'll name our child. I recall it being very one sided. It was very one sided. It was 100% one sided. It was not my (laughs) I'm pretty sure he was like, that's not my kid. I don't want anything to do with it. Your character was like a total deadbeat dad and was like, I'm not doing anything. That's not, yeah. I mean, I left to go for work and I come back to a child. (laughs) Like a year later, so many thousand experience points later. This child is now in Eberron. Kyle. Kyle. Jesus Christ, dude. Hey, you want to make Rayless Helps canon? You want to make our... You open the door. You, he's, he's kind of almost implying that you're the one that caused this. No, no. Nice. Good job, everyone. Okay, everyone, we love you. Thank you so much for watching. Nice. Or listening. Please leave a like, comment, share. Get this around the D&D community because we love playing D&D. I love playing D&D. I know all of you guys love playing D&D. But more importantly, is it Wednesday, my dudes? Woo! <laughs> he's so defeated. He's like, I can't fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, he's so defeated. All right. Love you all. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.